I think we are live. I think. I don't All know. Right. I guess we're going to find out. Hello, uh, universe. Yeah. And there he is, the man himself, Mr. Stephen Hummel, a celebrity in our midst here. I mean, this guy <laughs> is just going crazy. I'm getting emails. So I guess we're up. We're live. I see it on there. What's up, y'all? Uh, it is another Coffee and Astronomy Live. I've got my uh, warm beverage here. Like uh, I was telling Stephen, it's like a black hole of infinite coffiness. Uh, where there's definitely a singularity in there somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. Uh, but uh, we're going to hang out. We're going to have some fun. This is a low-key thing tonight. We're just going to uh, look at some deep sky objects. We're going to have some conversation with uh, my buddy Stephen Hummel here. We're going to hang out with you guys in the chat. Uh, I'll be throwing your comments up. So I hope your avatars are up to spec and uh, where you want them to be because they're about to be all over the interwebs. So sorry about that. Uh, but uh, before we get to any funness, uh, let's check out Mr. Stephen Hummel. He's our, our man of the hour this evening uh, in the red light district at the McDonald Observatory. You can see him there. And uh, Stephen, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Well, uh, it's a pleasure to be here just to hang out and have fun. Uh, yeah, I'm under the dark skies out at uh, McDonald Observatory, far west Texas. And uh, it's a perfectly clear, beautiful evening. Uh, another one in a row and the forecast is just for perfectly clear evenings uh for the next week and and until the forecast doesn't isn't reliable anymore so uh wow awesome weather lately um uh but yeah i got the 16 inch rc behind me here and uh once it gets a little darker it's still still kind of twilight right now uh we're gonna we're gonna have a look at some stuff and uh, if there's anything in particular you want to look at uh you, you just let us know in chat and uh, we can hop around we can look at uh, whatever whatever is available in the sky right now uh there's go pretty deep with uh with the sky conditions we got here uh i mean as long as i'm willing to go 10 minute integrations whatever you want uh to uh, show you whatever you want uh but yeah awesome. just hang out have a good time chat about astronomy there uh, you go and and you told me you have some coffee over there too so i think uh, steven's caffeinated up i'm caffeinated up and uh we're probably going to have some wild conversations, I'm sure. I mean, just you know, when you get caffeine in the brain, it just, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, cheers. It really doesn't. It really doesn't do anything to me anymore. Unfortunately, I, I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, oh, a cup of coffee, cool, and then it's like, it's nap time. Like, what? I just drank an espresso. You know, it's ridiculous. But uh, I guess that's that's how it goes. Let's get to some comments real quick before we uh, mess around with the sky. We got some more panelists jumping on. My buddy Ron Sparkman may join us in a minute. My buddy Mark Farage will probably join us as well from Houston. So we got some cool people coming in. What's up, Cody? How you doing? Uh, Doug Underwood in the house, loud and clear. Good to see you, Doug. Good evening. Uh, I'll call you uh, uh, Shawana. Mis <laughs> Mr. Shawana. How about that? Oh, How you all right, doing? All right. All right. That's, a, that's a name. I'm going to try that one out. Uh, okay. Nis Kamigak. Nikagani win at Shawana. I, hopefully that's close enough. Yeah, that, that sounded way better than anything I could have ever uttered. So good job, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I, I think I can get this one. Anya Gardner, how are you doing? Hello, good to see you. I think I can do this one too. This one's a little weird though. Stan, Stan, Stan. What's up, Stan? Uh, Avatar. Where do I get an avatar? Uh, I think you have to have one either on YouTube. Well, see, so yeah, your comments coming from YouTube. You have to have one like a profile picture on YouTube. That's it. Just pulls all that data from there. But good to have you, Stan. What's up, Hanzo? How you doing, Mr. David Sorrels? Good to see you, buddy. Long time no see. I got married by this guy. It's very cool guy. Uh, Andre Ramos. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, he's the Stan says they had two inches of snow today, so McDonald Observatory is doing good, Stephen. That's uh, you know, because you're at what 6,200 feet up there, a little over 6,000. Uh, where, right where I'm sitting, it's about 6,400. The summit is uh, 6,900. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, totally dry, good temperature, awesome. Yeah, I bet it's, I bet it's lovely out there. It's like shorts weather, no mosquitoes, just like beautiful, it's the best West time Texas of year, desert. yeah. Yeah. Hey, Laura, how you doing? Jason says comments. We probably might. Who knows? Let's see if the comment shows up. I bet it might. Uh, Al says, uh, keep it safe. We're going to try to keep it safe. But again, there's a lot of coffee flying around. So who knows? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh, Tommy Figa. How you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. 
man, I'm missing a lot of comments here. They're coming in like crazy. So we'll get to some yeah. of those and then we'll we'll hang out for a little bit. Uh, what's the biggest object uh, the 16 can look at? Well, there's uh, a lot of big objects. Yeah, so it's got a relatively tight field of view. Uh, it's about 20 arc minutes across. So, uh, you know, uh, most of the things in the sky right now are relatively small galaxies and such. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty small field of view. Uh, but, hey, that's good. I mean, that means you can go pretty deep. Uh, and I saw someone uh, talk about a comet. And uh, I do have a comet in here. It's not a comet I have actually looked at before. I just don't know how it's going to look. Uh, Brand new comet, y'all. Well, apparently it's been here the whole time. It just hasn't really gotten any any attention. Uh, <laughs> you, you probably heard a comet atlas, and that fizzled out and broke apart into a thousand pieces. Uh, and then the the, the uh, current uh, exciting comets, Comet Swan, but that's not really high enough yet. It's more of a southern hemisphere target at the moment. It'll come up north later on. Uh, but the comet I've currently got the telescope aimed at, although it's not dark enough yet, uh, is uh, C twenty seventeen T two Pan Stars about an eighth magnitude comet. And uh, just looking at some pictures of it taken by other amateur astronomers, it looks pretty majestic. So uh, we'll see what awesome. it looks like here pretty soon. Awesome. Sorry, sorry, An Anya. Is that right? Anya? Anya? I don't know. I'm sorry. Miss Gardner. Mr. Gardner. <laughs> Whatever you are. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my buddy John Reed says he's a little hungry. He's looking to maybe check out the hamburger. Now, the hamburger comes up later tonight, right? It's above Omega Centauri. Uh... No, no, that's you're think uh, you're thinking of uh, Centauri. Uh, this is uh, in Leo, the hamburger, and uh, Leo oh. is a uh, prime position. It's one of the Leo triplets. Oh, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Okay, you betcha. We can do that. Uh, let me make a list here. Uh, what is that? What is that other one called? Then is it also called the hamburger or or is it uh, the hamburger? Maybe I think you're just hungry. I don't know. <laughs> maybe what, so. what I, had, I had a homemade cheeseburger for dinner. It was pretty good. So John, John reads out either easily a mind reader or he's just, he's also hungry for a burger. I mean, I know we're all ready for fast food again, but uh, you know, it's dangerous. So <laughs> uh, video one media, what's up? How you doing? Good to see you, David again. Uh, two feet. I man, I forgot what we were talking about. So that probably made way more sense earlier. Sorry, Stan. Uh, Snow. Sunny, Snow. Oh, two feet. Two feet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, Steven. Uh, Sunny says, hello from Huntington Beach, California. I bet that's probably the only place where the weather is maybe marginally better than what Steven has on Mount Locke at the McDonald Observatory. Um, and there's definitely a beach there, which is like, yeah, mountains or beach, mountains or I don't know. Uh, hello from Taiwan. Hello, Kim. How you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Miss Garner says you're from California. Uh, here is, is this the designation, uh, John Reed threw this one down, C2019 Y4. That's Atlas, right? Yeah, that was yeah, Atlas. Yeah, that's Atlas. Yeah, mm -hmm. Atlas is uh, kind of uh, fizzled out right now. Uh, so I, I'm not going to bother with it tonight. It's just yeah. the action's we've over. Seen, we've, we've seen it, we've, it by this time. Yeah, we, we watched it on my last broadcast. So if, you, if you're curious about that, Stephen joined us for the Astronomical Society of Southeast Texas uh, meeting, uh, what, a week or two ago? Uh, so you can go check it out there that th there is live images of Comet Atlas there. So what's up, Nicole? How you doing? Hey, Scott, first timer here. Good to have you, Scott. Um, welcome to the the insanity that is astronomy online, which is pretty cool that we can do this, actually. Oh, I've seen the Starlink satellites. Yeah, yeah, I saw those the other night, too. They went right through my video on YouTube. Thanks, Elon. Appreciate you. Did y'all catch the... Uh, <laughs> it is uh, in Atlas, so we can see the pieces. My boss at the observatory imaged the pieces last night. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Stephen and I were talking about Damien Peach's image, uh, which is fantastic, of the uh, of the, the fragments sort of floating past the main piece. It was very cool. Yeah, it's really cool stuff to see all those fragments. Yeah, it's it's a it was a beautiful uh, thing, and uh, yeah, right now it's just kind of dim and kind of low. So maybe maybe. Uh, Maybe we'll get a chance again, right? Uh, deja vu with Comet Swan. It probably will not last, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. They all seem to be breaking up these days because they're like, oh, it's a new comet. It's going to be great. And then it's like, where'd it go? Where'd it yeah. go? Yeah, and this this new one, Comet Swan, uh, it it's uh, on a really hyperbolic orbit, which means it's, it probably came from way far out in the solar system, like the Oort cloud, and mm -hmm. it's going to cut pretty close to the sun. And we think this is probably the first time it's made a pass around the sun. 
And the, the first time for a comet is always rough. They usually, uh, they, they, they get really bright really fast. And oftentimes the really volatile stuff off the surface burns off. Uh, and then either uh, what's left over isn't all that exciting or it breaks apart. So yeah, yeah we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, comets are, I think David Levy, who is one of my favorite amateur astronomers, and one of the really the in, inspirations for me getting into astronomy kind of in a lot of ways. Uh, he said he has a famous quote about comets and it's uh, comets are like cats. Um, they have tails and they do what they want. <laughs> that's accurate. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, hey, CJ yeah. from Iowa. How you doing? Look at all these. Look at all these new time, uh, first timers. Columbus or Columbia. Sorry, Laura. How you doing? All the way from Columbia, Kansas in the house. Vintage Ventures. Oh, I know Vintage Ventures. Uh, long time, uh, commenter on my deep sky do video. So thank you, vintage. Thank you. Uh, cool. Lots of comments coming in guys. Thank y'all for hanging yeah. out. Thank y'all for chilling with us. This is fun. Uh, you know, I, I hit Steven up, uh, you know, I was like, Hey man, can you do that thing that you do? That's awesome again on my stream. And he was like, yeah, so I was like, <laughs> just do it Sunday night. <laughs> Hey, there's Xander himself. We were talking about Xander uh, on uh, well, multiple live streams because of his awesome commentary on the now infamous video of the CRS-20 launch from SpaceX. So, Xander, you're more famous than I am, man. People hated my, oh, my God, because I was just tripping, you know, but <laughs> sorry, about the, sorry about that Internet. I don't know what else to say when I'm trying to film something and it's just beautiful. So um, and uh, we got a link here. I wouldn't have been any better. <laughs> yeah, I would have picked that too. Um, oh my God! Yeah, there's a clip what? of me seeing some like uh, a meteor break apart and a lot of pieces. Uh, I was in the middle of like doing a presentation. I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, like, what are you supposed to that. say? Like, yeah, it's it happening so fast that you're just like, oh, 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 you know, and then it's gone, and everybody's yeah. like, what? I'm like, but it was big and beautiful, and they're like, no, you're a liar. What's up, Michael D? What's up, Jeff Ball? How you doing? Uh, Centaurus A galaxy is also called Hamburger. Yeah, yeah, I think there, yeah. there's a lot of Hamburgers out there, but uh, it just depends on uh, where you want to get your Hamburger from. What's up, Dean? How you doing? Good to see you. Jessica caught my sarcasm. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, hell, we have our first alien. Hello, humans. How are you? I am alien. So, thank wow. You, alien. wow. I've always wanted to be an alien. I, yeah. This is never. This is historic. This, this is, uh, is unprecedented. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little cut off guard. I don't know. <laughs> We're a little bit clamped. You must talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Uh, I, by the way, I do have this. Uh, this other comet, the less flashy comet, in the uh, telescope right now. If you want to take a look yeah. at it. Yeah. Uh, so again, this is uh, 2017 T2. It was a. It's a pan stars comet. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is a 30 second exposure right here. Uh, and uh, you can see it's got a pretty bright core, almost stellar, yeah. uh, stellar core there, uh, and then uh, kind of diffuse halo. Uh, I'm not catching much of a tail. Uh, but let me change the filter here, and uh, maybe that will there will be a different story if I put a different filter in there. Way more uh, pinpoint a nucleus, way way more stellar, like you said, than Atlas was, and uh, yeah, so that foreshortening of the tail might actually be pointed at us or pointed away from us. That's true. Uh, or it could just be a, one of those blob comments that we see from time to time. I mean, those are seem like they're pretty frequent recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it? Comet um, uh, last year, there was a relatively bright comet. We got up to like Mag 4 for a while. Um, uh, uh, Mortanen, yeah, Comet Mortanen. And it didn't really have, yeah. it didn't really have a tail at all. Um, right. You could see it naked eye, barely. Uh, but didn't have much of a tail. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, de yeah, definitely bright stellar core, uh, but uh, not in this short exposure. I'm not catching too much of a tail, although my screen's also really dark. So, really. but maybe there is some uh, some something going off to the right hand side there. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm on the wrong side of my screen here, but <laughs> over. I think, yeah. Over. I think I think there is something kind of extending off of it, but it's not much. Yeah, let's see. My guider had a little moment there. That's why the stars kind of freaked out. Um, but yeah, let's take another exposure there. It's also yeah. still still not totally dark. Uh, it, it's, right. right. It's almost dark, but it's not totally dark. Yeah. Yeah, we could have probably waited till nine thirty ten even 
to because yeah. where I'm at in Texas and where Steven is in Texas might as well be another state. I mean, he is literally like close to 800 miles or 700 miles from me, uh, which and in in the direction of like the wrong time zone. So like yeah. s- essentially, he's kind of in another time zone where it's just not really officially reflected. But yeah, I, I really should be in Mountain Time. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Uh, but I'm or right you're in the yet. mountains. So, I, yeah. yeah, I am. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Still no hint really of a tail there. Let me see if I can get rounder stars. I haven't had a chance to have the scope cool off yet. So my stars are a little, little funky yeah. at the moment. Uh, Which can happen. Yeah. But it's good to see you, Brian. Good to have you with us. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Davis says, Will, con- congrats on mention on Less Junk, More Journeys NASA episode. Yeah. I met, I got to meet Less Junk, More Journey, both of them, the couple on the NASA social. And they were super cool. And uh, they asked if they could use my video for their video. And I was like, absolutely. You know, why not just throw my name on there somewhere? And so uh, lots of people, have, they have tons of subscribers and lots of people have seen my video. And, and Chris is one of them. So that's actually, I've had two people be like, dude, you were on their video. I was like, yes, it worked. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Funny. That's awesome. Yeah, I see a comment. Someone said, yeah, I see some dust rings there. Yeah, um, uh, on the scope. Uh, yeah, that's. That's true because it's not totally dark. The sky is actually pretty bright, and then and if you're using a, uh, if you're taking pictures uh, through a filter and it's kind of bright out, you're gonna get some you're gonna get some shadows of dust, but they'll they'll disappear pretty soon, and uh, yeah, they're not, they're not that big of a deal. And that's one thing that uh, is is good about calibration frames. Of course, as an astrophotographer, you're not just gonna take these. Even though I do it sometimes, you're not going to take these lights or these luminance images that he's running here and and take them and just put them up on the internet. Again, I do that. Uh, <laughs> <but> what, you, <laughs> what you normally do is you take darks and flat images. I won't go into what those are because you know that's a deeper subject than probably we want to go into right now. But uh, you take darks and flats, and sometimes even bias. I think maybe bias has fallen by the wayside nowadays. But you take all those frames and you stack them all together, including your your image, your light images. And then the computer does some algorithmic stuff and actually removes those uh, dust rings uh, and things like that off your image so you get a nice smooth uh, image. But yeah, again, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that. just straight from the camera, nothing done to it. Uh, and yeah, usually if I were like publishing something, I would have uh, done my calibrations. All right, so you can see that there's a little bit of extended uh, extension there from a the tail, uh, but it is it's faint. I don't know if it, how. Um, how bright it really is. I don't think we're going to get too much more data out of it than that. Uh, but yeah, definitely a dust donut there. Uh, it It's a big scope. Stuff's going to get in there. And I just yeah. calibrate it out on the final product. So, yeah. And you don't want to clean your mirrors too often, people. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and Stephen, you know, I know y'all probably have a regiment down there. I know y'all have one for like the 102 and the 82 and stuff like that. Like what is some of the regiments for the those smaller scopes? Is it like twice a year or what? I mean, like once every two years you clean them, once every year or uh, that? It, for this one, it's about every four or five months or so. We'll take some compressed air and uh, and try to get in there and, and, and blow some of the stuff off. Um, we're also sometimes use, uh, instead, if, instead of compressed air, we'll use dry ice, snow. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, dry ice sends like a really weird way to clean a mirror. But we take a little nozzle and uh, a canister filled with uh, CO2. And as it uh, flows out through the nozzle, it, it turns to dry ice, these little flecks of ice. Uh, and uh, it gently brushes any dust off the mirror surface with these little flakes of snow. And static al- allows the dust to cling to it. And then dry ice sublimates or sublimes. It goes directly from a solid to gas. So it, it takes the dust with it and leaves nothing behind, no residue left over. Uh, so that's that's the preferred way to clean our research telescopes. We do that once a week on there. Uh, on these, it, it, we don't do it as much because, well, they're smaller uh, and, they're, and this one's a closed tube. So it's not gonna get as much dust in there. So it's been a few months since I cleaned it actually. Yeah, um, and, you, and the better you kind of try to keep the scope contained, the better, it is, but it's a. Is it a truss uh, tube setup, Stephen? No, uh, it is. A, it is a um, carbon fiber solid tube. I oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, enclosed gotcha. tube setup. Gotcha. Yeah, Xander says that social was amazing. He ain't lying, brother. That was everybody on that NASA social event was amazing, uh, and it was cool. I've actually done two NASA socials with Xander. <coughs> uh, it was a <coughs> Mishu uh, assembly facility. 
which is where they've built everything and uh, the space S rock SpaceX rocket launch. So that's, that was cool. There is a question, Stephen. Uh, Rosette Nebula near Orion. Uh, somebody was looking for that, but I don't know if uh, that may be a little low for you, huh? Yeah, let me uh, let me figure out um, if how high it is right now. Oh, yeah. OK, let me let me zoom out here. Chris, we're going to come back to your question in a second because you just happen to be talking to the man himself, the dark sky. Uh, what is your position exactly, Stephen? Dark, dark sky specialist. Spe dark specialist. Sky specialist. So yeah. we're going to come back to your question in a second there. Uh, yeah, we can we can do the rosette. Uh, it's uh, it's doable. Um, oh. it's, it's a really big target. Keep in mind that's, that's, uh, over a degree across and our field of view is really small. So we're only going to get the, the, the heart of it. Um, uh, but, uh, we, we can do that. We can, we can do it. Yeah. And you got an HA filter in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. He's got a filter wheel full of all kinds of goodness. So a filter wheel is basically a, a wheel that has many filters all the way around in it. And so Steven here, he can, he can go to a target. He can tell the computer what filter he wants. The right filter moves into the light path of the camera. And between the telescope and the camera, you have this filter wheel, which allows him to take red images, blue images, green, luminance, hydrogen alpha. What we call narrow band is like the hydrogen alpha, the uh, what is some of the other ones? Uh, 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 well, let's see what I got here. I got um, so, uh, sulfur, too. Sulfur, too, yeah. Uh, oh, three. O3 hydrogen okay. and LRGB. I have another field tool here that's not attached, and I got I got a lot more as well. Uh, Do you have an eighth beta in there? Uh, I got it in the other field tool wheel. It's not installed. Oh, gotcha. I don't use it enough to, you know, I only have so many slots, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can only use so many filters in in one thing. That's for sure. Kevin, uh, Kevin Wayne, a good buddy of mine from back in the day. I guess he's still a good buddy of mine. We're just we're, we're online friends now, whatever. But uh, what are y'all using? Now to get the thirty seconds exposures, that's uh, sharp cap, right? Uh, that was what I was using on the other stream there. Um, oh, sequence now, generator. Yeah, now I'm using sequence generator Pro, which is a little, little more sophisticated than I was using there. Uh, the other one, the other stream, if you watch that, I got great. If you did, uh, that that was that was a little more, um, a little more general audience, you know. Uh, try to keep it simple, keep it to the things. Uh, and this time, uh, in this stream, I'll show you a little more behind the scenes stuff of uh, how how all this kind of works and comes together. If you if you're interested, okay. Move, no. While we're while we're down time for a second, Mr. Ron Sparkman What's in the on? house. What's he that? broke away. He broke away from the addiction of a uh, of the scourge of PlayStation Four, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII remake. Right? Yeah, man. Oh, God. <laughs> it's oh, it's so good. <laughs> I, figured, I figured you'd be having fun. I was like, why isn't he responding to my messages? He must, he must have a fever. <laughs> That's yeah, good to man. have you, Ron. Yeah, man. No, uh, I've been uh, I've been playing that one, just having a blast with it. Um, my buddy already beat it, so I'm trying to catch up to him because he knows all the cool stuff. I don't want him to ruin it. <laughs> I was yeah, going, no, no spoilers. Yeah, we're doing good. Hey, hey, hey Ron. Steve, Steven, I, didn't, I don't think I asked the other night whenever we were talking about it. Steve, okay? You prefer Steven? Uh, I go by Steven just because there's a bunch of Steves here. Fair enough. And it's uh, easy to get them confused. There's six of us. Six? Yeah. All I know is you and uh, Steve Odawan. I think that's the only two Steves I know out there. <laughs> well, you know Steve Odawan. He's, yeah, he's an astronomer. There's, there's a bunch more. Yeah. Steve, Steve Odawan is like uh, the man. Uh, that dude is uh, everybody knows Steve Odawan, at least I in my opinion. <laughs> you'll you'll meet him one day he's I promise. Cool yeah he's a professional astronomer here yeah. uh on the hobby i relay telescope oh nice yeah i'll see if i can find him yeah the other there's another steve on the uh on the on the hobby i relay telescope uh, steve janowecki uh what scope are you using this is a 16 inch uh rc f9 uh with a reducer and uh so this is um uh research grade telescope yeah. Yeah. Uh, massively uh, research grade. I, I couldn't sell my house and afford that scope. Let's just say that. Uh, <laughs> All right. we're, on, we're on Laura's TV, y'all. So um, don't do anything crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I told you, Ron, don't do yeah. that. <laughs> 
I mean, you have to be right? It's Sunday night. Talking about yeah. space. Got to do a little, yeah. a little dance. Make a little... Yeah. Well, not the other part. But... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see another question here. What brand of filters are you using? Uh, Steven, that's a good question because there are a lot of brands of, uh, of filters out there. Uh, it's, uh, they're Bader, B-A-A-D-E-R. Oh, Bader. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Y'all find those are good enough for your, for the research grade stuff? Uh, this is, this is a research setup, uh, for the research ones we use. There's some Astrodon filters and some, uh, other specialized filters by, uh, oh, I don't remember the company. Um, uh, it's quite a few. Yeah. There um, are a few. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them are, are crazy. There's a, there's a one nanometer pass band H alpha filter, which if you know anything about H alpha filters is crazy, yeah. um, to use for research projects sometimes. Um, we're not cool. We're just bored out of our minds. <laughs> and <laughs> Steven's got like the ultimate scope. How, how are the skies out there going, man? At the moment, they're okay. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty good. Now the scope is having a hard time cooling down. Um, so it's, uh, it's a little, uh, warmer in the dome than it is outside. And sometimes that can make our optics go a little funky. Um, but, uh, I'm working on that. Yeah. You can see a little, the stars, a little extra spiky. Nice. Yeah. Um, all right. But I love uh, the yeah, fraction can, spikes though. Yeah. You can, you can see that, uh, I mean, this, the, the rosette is enormous, right? It's, it's, it's way huge. bigger than the field of view, uh, of the telescope. So we're just looking at the central stars at the rosette right now. Uh, but you can see some of the nebulosity is down in the lower right, uh, as well as around it here as well so let's switch this luminance filter let's switch to h alpha here and uh we'll take a um take a longer frame here in a moment we'll put that off screen just to get that we've been called out we, we've been called nerds by nerds. i think maybe a bigger nerd so i think it's a compliment i'm pretty sure oh okay so thank I'll take you it. thank you brian <laughs> wear that with pride Sandra says, y'all excited for DM2. I'm assuming that's uh, a launch. Yes. Yeah. That's demo two. Yeah, that's demo two. That's the uh, demo two. Yeah. That's where um, that's where astronauts will, will fly. Yeah, man. May 27th. Can't wait for that. I'll be there. Yeah, I will too if the if the creeks don't rise or the COVID doesn't. <laughs> yeah. COVID rise or something. Yeah. yeah. If I would, uh, I want to ask anybody watching this to please stay. Um, the F at home. So that way we can all go see this launch. Then you don't have to push it back until like March, 2022. That'd be great. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Stay <laughs> home. And wash your hands. Wash, wash your hands. Filth, wash your hands. Filthy animals. <laughs> <laughs> what are we baboons here? Wash your hands. <laughs> Remember, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Rocco's modern life, really obscure reference here, but, the turtle, he he had this thing where he'd be like, turn your page, wash your hands, turn the page. <laughs> that popped into my head. He was reading the paper and it kept getting on his fingers, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm excited about that, uh, Xander. I hope to see you there, man. Hope to see you there. I'll be there with my uh, my massive lens <laughs> if again if everything goes goes well. And uh, so if Will has that lens, I'm just going to accidentally elbow him. And uh, take it from yeah. me so that way I can take some <laughs> pictures of it. I'll be I'll be like oh, and I'll be like, get off me, man. Yeah, throw the bows. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, oh my god, but it'll be me saying that because he's messing with me, and I'll be like, stop it. <laughs> stop. All right, so you got a uh, you got the rosette here, and uh, because I've centered the object, it's sort of um, well, we're looking at the the hole essentially of <laughs> the rosette nebula where there's the least action, and all the actions on the edges because the field of view is so small. Um, but you can see this kind of little dusty clouds here in the edge, uh, those those clouds of dust absorbing the starlight, as well as uh, some of the action here uh, in H alpha around the center too. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, I saw a question. What is the elevation here, and how much does elevation affect the seeing? Um, the elevation again, is where exactly I am, is about 6,400 feet. The higher you go, the less atmosphere there is. Uh, but seeing is most, mostly affected by very local effects, um, and so uh, really, seeing is mostly a function of the temperature 
in inside the dome, inside the telescope, compared to what it's like outside. Because uh, if the temperature is any different, you'll get a kind of mirage effect. And uh, right now, because the temperature changes so fast out here in the desert, once sunset happens, it goes from pretty warm to pretty cold pretty quickly. So the seeing right around sunset and about an hour after, like right now, isn't super great. And also there's warm air trapped in here. And uh, that is actually why the stars are not round perfectly. They're kind of spiky um, because of actually atmospheric effects within the dome itself and inside the telescope, which will equalize out in a little while, um, which is why if, you, if you're doing any professional work, uh, you would have everything inside the dome already pre-air conditioned to the nighttime temperature. Uh, right. But I, I don't have, the AC isn't powerful enough all the time in here. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, is that a is that a is that a quartz mirror, Stephen, on that uh, sixteen? Is uh, mm. fusilica? It's yeah. I think it's fusilica. Yeah, it's quartz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. The specific uh, blend that the company is is called Astrocital. Oh, Astrocital. So it's a uh, it's a zero expansion. It's uh, it's yeah. like zero dir or something. One of those. Yeah. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, wow. 140 40th wave optics. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It can do better than what's displayed here. All right. So uh, that was that's the rosette. Uh, someone else requested the Hamburglar. The Hamburglar Galaxy. Yes, Jane, this is a uh, sequence generator pro. Oh, well, this isn't, but the one he is using for acquisition, this one here is. So, yes, yeah. good call. Good call, Jane. Jane knows her stuff. And so does Brian. He says, quit licking the doorknobs. This seems <laughs> simple. You know, and it should be simple. <laughs> should be. Uh, <laughs> so Hello, quit, Cindy. By quit licking the doorknobs, he means stop going to the beaches in Florida. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's going to stop the launch. Sorry, I'm off that now. Because you know what happens at the beaches doesn't always stay at the beaches. So wash your hands. It never has. <laughs> I was in the beach for a decade. I know better. <laughs> the beaches are not like Vegas, y'all. Quit going out there. I saw a meme that was pretty funny. And it was like, I wish the virus had started in Vegas because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> kind of dumb, but still pretty funny. Still pretty funny. Those Why not the? Right, right. <laughs> 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 Woo, we won't go there. Hey, so why doesn't everybody who's watching drop in the comments where they're from, and I'll feature your comment on the television screen? How about that? Let's do that, because because we're bored, and you know we're uh, we're here just chilling, bunch of dudes, you know, with uh, I got guitars in the background, which is cool. But it's not as cool as what Stephen has behind him, which is a sixteen inch. <laughs> Research grade Richie Krishin, Richie Krechian, Richie Crichton, however you want to say it. Richie. I've never heard buddy. of his name like twice. I me either. And I've said it all the different I ways, I think. Just, <laughs> we'll have to get a, a an optical expert in here one night to kind of school us on exactly the correct pronunciation. Um but for now, RC telescope is is uh uh we can also say it's you know it's the same optical design as Hubble. That yeah. usually People are like, oh, the point across. Yeah. Oh, it's really nice. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really expensive. Gotcha. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. That's actually I mean, yeah, so a, over a hundred year old design. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, it's it's, okay. it's essentially based on a oh. cassegrain, right? Yeah, it's a variation on that. It would help if I put uh, not the H alpha filter in there. <laughs> yeah, galaxies don't don't really do well in H alpha. Yeah. Nice background, Ron. Wow, that's uh, that's a heady. Look at that. That's a that's a, a deep <laughs> a deep pull. I gotta put I gotta put that one up because this photo was actually taken at Texas Star Party, which is not gonna happen this year, unfortunately. Yeah. Careful where you're touching me there, Ron. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, man. I won uh, an art contest that year, I think, which was pretty cool. Oh, you're you're muted, Ron. But I know you're probably nice. might be right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> He's like, nice. <laughs> Mohammed says one fortieth wave. Wow, that's amazing. I would like to know which brand of telescope it is. Is it a brand though, uh, Stephen, or is uh, yeah. it just a? 
RCOS, uh, which oh, is optical, system, opti optical oh. systems. Yeah. RCOS is like the Ferrari of Ferraris, really. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. they make they're not around anymore. Um, the company went out of business a few years back, but um, they made they made uh, some pretty nice telescopes. Absolutely. All right, there's Ooh. that hamburger. That's a 10 Look second um, exposure there. 10 uh, seconds. To, or, I'm sorry, 20 seconds. Oh, 20 Bye -bye. seconds. 20 wow, seconds. wow. Okay, let's go for a minute. While you're doing that, I'm going to throw these comments up to where everybody's from. Central Arkansas. Nice. Very good, Chris. Covina, California. What's up, coffee? <laughs> coffee and guns and ammo. Astronomy. Coffee, guns, ammo. Yeah, we're just minus a few of those <laughs> things here. Uh, I could work them in somehow, I think. Yeah, I could shoot at my oh, uh, computer or something. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Kroll show style. <laughs> Cave Creek, Arizona. What's up, Jim? Nice. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, she's stuck in uh, Vegas with her grandmother. That's probably worse places in the world to be stuck, I guess, than, than stuck in Vegas, huh? Hashtag Austin. Look at there. <laughs> Kyle, Texas, not far from Austin. Look at that. I think uh, I think Doug Doug Underwood <laughs> might be the creepiest dancer on there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get down there. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for it. It's it's getting real. <laughs> Cody Kinsley, Longview, Texas. Oh look at this, Canada. There we go. Oh, we knew Canada. We knew Stan was here. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, there's that hamburger. Edge on Galaxy. Uh, you can see why they call it that. You know, it's got almost looks like a patty with the meat in the middle and the buns on top. Uh, and then you got the lettuce sticking out the sides of the buns, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a McDonald's yeah. hamburger. Huh, it's a McDonald's look, hamburger. Yep, let's yeah. load it up with lettuce so that way that makes, makes them think that they got something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. That was definitely yeah. worth $7 for. Yeah, the Big Mac was just like three pieces of bread. Like, wait, I bought a burger. I didn't think I bought a loaf of bread with my meat here. This is <laughs> That'd be about crazy. Uh, well, while we're nearby, um, <laughs> there's another galaxy not too far from here. Uh, that is uh, M66. It's a good one. Oh, yeah. Part of the Leo Trio, huh? Mm -hmm. See, that, that one we just looked at was the top of the Leo Trio. You could yeah. Say. Xander's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's not fair, Xander. You're way too close to the launch. Uh, your drive is shorter than mine. That's not fair. So I'm I'm uh, I'm not happy with that. But that's cool. But I'm not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I'm missing a lot of comments here. Montreal, Canada. There we go. Look at that galaxy, man. Nice little semi face on. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a pretty good one. I'm just still using a. I, I switch between software too too much. I can't decide which which software <laughs> I like the best. I'll just do it in here. Um, this is Shark Cap again. No, this is um, the Sky Ten. Oh, the Sky X. Oh, wow. Yeah, Sky X, whatever you want to call it. That's an expensive little piece of program right there. Well, yeah, they nickel and dime you, but the, you, in order to run this mount, this Paramount, uh, you have right. to run the Sky X. They won't let you use anything else. That's uh, right. Just kind of silly, if you ask me, but uh, that's what it is. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Like several minutes ago, there someone asked in the que a question in in the chat about how bad the uh, the light pollution is here from the oil and gas industry. Um, yeah, and it, it is is it it is not that bad. Uh, because the, anywhere we would point a telescope, uh, there really is no detectable light pollution. Um, all the light pollution is concentrated down low along the horizon. And uh, we have worked with the oil and gas industry uh, to uh, adopt better lighting techniques. And the surrounding seven counties around McDonald Observatory all have dark sky ordinances so that they're required to have uh, dark sky compliant lighting. That means lights can't be aimed straight up. Uh, in other words, and other things. Uh, however, uh, it's not always enforced. Got a nice big satellite there in the field. Yeah, I was about to say, one of uh, Elon Musk's uh, Starlinks probably just burning on through the image there. Quite possibly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could be, could be. Um, yeah, I don't know which one. That is. There's, there's so many. There's so there's, many. There's thousands. Um, but yeah, on the subject of light pollution, uh, so it has not affected our research, uh, but uh, we're, I'm working 
with them to keep it from doing that. I mean, we made some friends. Uh, Apache uh, uh, company, uh, oil corporation, is, has donated quite a bit of money to us to promote our Dark Skies effort um, and other things. So uh, it's mostly just ignorance. You know, it's not that people are are intentionally pointing their lights up in the sky and, and trying to ruin our you know, trying to make the skies brighter, they just don't know. Uh, and so everyone who's ever adopted our recommended lighting, lighting techniques loves it because it's safer, because it points the light where it needs to be. It, um, uh, yeah, the images you're showing look better in SGP. I agree. The uh, default um, <laughs> settings there are, are better. So I'll, I'll switch back to it. Um, BB01, Perth, Australia. G'day, mate. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go all... I'd be like somebody <laughs> saying, oh, look, it's Will from Texas. Howdy, y'all. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But that's exactly what you sound like. <laughs> yeah, it's true. All yeah, right, I mean, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know, it's weird. And, and uh, Ron, somebody else has started. Uh, they, they've been doing this the whole time, saying that I sound like Matthew McConaughey. And they, they say, you know, they're like, meet me at the moon tower and all this. <laughs> and I'm, I finally got it, like why they kept saying that. And I'm like, oh, man, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Ever been to McDonald's Observatory? Be a whole lot cooler if you did. A whole lot cooler. <laughs> uh, what is the camera? Jane uh, Lubinsky wants to know. Uh, ZWO ASI 1600mm Pro. So it's a CMOS sensor. Ooh, look at that, how tight that is. That's a tight image, man. Gorgeous. I mean, if I got that, I'd be like, okay, processing done. Upload time. Here comes, <laughs> here comes internet. Yeah, the core is really bright. It's hard to expose um, both, you know, the way you want in there. Core is yeah, so bright. It's a but beautiful, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful spiral, and you can tell that there's evidence of interaction within, like, the not too distant past, right? I mean, you got that irregular sort of shape. You've got a nice oh. bar in the middle. You got a nice uh, stellar core, which typically is uh, indicative of active galactic nuclei, right? So it's probably feeding on some kind of material in there yeah uh, it could be uh, i haven't i don't remember if this one is particularly active uh but this possibility is pretty bright and that is usually an indication of that um uh but yeah the, the, i know that this one does have a history of interaction with other nearby galaxies uh m65 uh, uh, nearby just outside the field and uh, that's why this spiral is a little bit distorted uh compared to others uh like um yeah you can see it's got two big arms big spiral arms but uh, they are not perfectly symmetrical yeah <clears throat> and um you know the hamburger that we just showed uh you know it's an edge on galaxy so it's the same kind of style galaxy as this one just a unit from a different angle and you could see on that one it was frayed at the edges you know indicating that it had, it had definitely been rocked by some kind of close interaction at one point it seems like yeah Super cool. And I think all these galaxies are, they're all in Leo. So they're part of the sort of the, the, I guess, is it the Leo cluster or are they a part of the Virgo super cluster that just stretches down a little bit from there? I think it's part of the, just based on their distance, they're, they're probably a branch off of the Virgo um, cluster. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the Leo cluster, I think is kind of happens to be there, but it's a little further out. Um, Charlie. Yeah, I want to show them. Hey, Chris okay. Davis says, with the SkyX, you can set your binning to 3x3, three three and it will look a lot better. Interesting. I've just started getting into learning what binning is because I never messed with it, but that's an interesting topic. Uh, yeah, uh, for... I, I'm doing that in, in SGP. Uh, so uh, I've already, I've, I'm, I'm doing that in both. You can do it in both. Ah, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, but now, does that, about that the moves the image? That moves the image so that it's not over the same pixels. Am I getting that right, or is it? Um, no, you're uh, you're thinking of something that's else. That's dithering. That's dithering. That's dithering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So with binning, you're saying that let's say you have uh, four pixels and a kind of a grid of two and two. You're grouping all of them together to to be one pixel. So you're taking the light of four pixels and combining them, so you get you get you get less resolution, but it's brighter you get more signal uh so that's binning two by two and binning three by three would be a grid of three pixels and so you'd want to do that if your pixels are kind of too small essentially uh for what the conditions allow you to actually resolve uh or for more sensitivity so usually i've been two by two 
uh, is a kind of a compromise. Bidding three by three, I would perceive more detail, but you start to lose a lot of resolution. Okay. So three by three or two by two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whichever you prefer. Hmm. Okay. See, this is, these are astrophotography terms that I never got that deep into it. I just scratched the surface with astrophotography because I'm more of a visual guy. Uh, but I'm going to change that, man. I'm about to upgrade my camera, I think. I'm going to get one of these nice, fancy cameras like Steven has over here. <laughs> yeah, this one's, this one's treated me pretty well. It's been pretty reliable. Yeah, and, and thousands of people have viewed through that camera, man. I mean, so That's let's true. talk real quick. Uh, the diameter of the scope, Jane, is uh, 16 inches on this one. And you, let me pull Steven up so you can kind of see it there. You can see it in the dark there kind of rotating around. Uh, but Steven has... Uh, Stephen works at the McDonald Observatory, and um, he's uh, been running their live streams lately, uh, which have been on the official uh, McDonald Observatory uh, YouTube uh, page. So you've got to go over to that page and follow the McDonald Observatory. Turn on the bell so you get all the notifications because you want to be around when Stephen goes live on this particular telescope right here. Uh, he does these uh, hour-long presentations where you can ask questions. Uh, you can interact with those of us in the chat room live. And he has all these awesome animations of like, here's a planetary <laughs> nebula, and this is what happens when it runs out of fuel and it expands its gas shells into space. And this kind of stuff is very important to visualize the the kind of contextually like what's going on out there. Because I we could all show you an object and be like, here's this fuzzy thing, and you'd be like, okay, cool. But what Stephen brings it to the next level and shows you those animations, which really kind of drives the point home. Like this was a star. It ran out of fuel. It collapsed. It blew its guts out into space. Here it is. You know, so good, good job on that, man. And he's getting thousands of views, man. I'm talking, there was, I think, uh, over 800 or around 800 people. Uh, was it last night, Steve? I was thinking it was yeah. Yeah, Saturday night. Last yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. There's about 800 live and now there's about 3000 views or something. Uh, which is which is I, I did not expect it to be um, this this popular. If I'm being honest, I, I'm completely taken taken back by how popular the program has been, um, and they're a lot of fun to do. Uh, I, I do definitely encourage you to to uh, to watch those programs uh, where I'm, I'm. I guess it's a little more a little more professional and more aimed at the um, the casual observer who may not know. Um, much about astronomy um but but I, I honestly i think this is more fun you know just hanging out uh yeah. talking astronomy uh with my, with my friends and uh taking pictures here and there just for fun about what you want to look at uh whether yeah. than, rather than focusing on uh what uh, uh what particularly uh, i think is uh most educational or interesting uh so yeah both programs yeah i i i just like looking at stuff i'll, I'll look whatever is up you know <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a reason why Stephen has climbed through the ranks out there at McDonald Observatory. He knows his stuff extremely well and intimately. He has intimate knowledge of the sky. And that's, I think, why Stephen and I connected, because I don't know anything about the sky and he's taught me everything I know. So, <laughs> but no, it's, it's good to have uh, it's good to have uh, friends in, in literally high elevation places like like Stephen is like, out there because he can show us stuff when here it's cloudy humid and there's 9,000 mosquitoes surrounding the area where I usually observe from. So this is fantastic for me. I'm not getting bit. I'm just sitting back and kind of having some coffee with you guys and kind of relaxing and looking at faint ancient light. Look at that face on galaxy. Wow. Yeah, that's M101 there. I'll, I'll, I was trying to take a longer exposure. Sometimes if I swap between programs, it doesn't like that. Uh, uh, throws a fit. Uh, <clears throat> so I just tried to do it and then it said... Oh no, I don't want to do that. Um, but okay, well, there, uh, here's a here's a 30 second exposure of uh, M101 coming up. Another face on spiral galaxy. You see here, Thanks. up here, here, but better in a moment. Is uh, 101 is 101 fireworks, or am I confusing that with someone no, that's, else? No, that's that's that one is uh, within actually. Uh, isn't that in it's near Cygnus or something? That's what that's up in the summer. Um, okay. Sorry. Yeah, 101 is yeah. the pinwheel. Pinwheel. The pinwheel. Really, big face on they all have these really obscure names and honestly i know them by their number names better than <laughs> than the like the weird names that they give them but these little nicknames that's that's an awesome picture though man Are look at that weird? they seem to be pretty on the nose like <laughs> well <laughs> you know like hamburger <laughs> I the yeah it looks like an eye <laughs> yeah yeah 
No, some of them do. Like the ghost, so the ghost of Jupiter, though, is one of those ones that I love the name, but it's such a stupid name. But it's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. means absolutely nothing. But yeah, man, it's awesome. It's a such a cool thing. But look at this, man. You can see the obviously you can see the central core of the galaxy. You can see the spiral arms radiating out, and then those dense knots that are sort of those stellar associations. You know, those are massive clumps of clusters inside this galaxy uh probably what 20 30 million light years away this one i'm not exactly sure i don't remember the numbers on these uh guys. it's relative um yeah i thought it was it was less than 20 or around 20 i can't remember around 20 yeah I, I do remember this is a pretty big spread out galaxy it's over uh, i think it's 170,000 light years in diameter so it's Oof. big but it's also you can just kind of tell it's it's not very compact it's sort of spread out uh, compared to a lot of other galaxies, um, it's Absolutely. very spread out. And um, I see Jim Twelman in the comments there from St. Louis, Missouri. Hello, Jim. Jim uh, is from the uh, Astronomical Society of Eastern Missouri. Is that right? Or are you at SLAS now? I can't remember. I can't keep them straight. Uh, but that's kind of where I got started with astronomy, uh, actually, just a few years ago feels like forever ago it wasn't really that long ago it was like what 20, 2016 2017 i was i was there with and uh uh basically uh i joined a little uh, uh astronomy club out there in st louis and uh, that's that's really where i learned everything i know uh, to start off with and then i then i took more classes and took it more seriously and i started working here at mcdonald uh, but nice. Jim, if you're ever if you're ever in the area, if if this whole COVID thing passes over, you come on down. We'll have a look through the 82 inch. Yeah, there you go. On the image and the 82 thing, awesome. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to miss too many comments here, but uh, yes, coffee, guns, ammo, and astronomy. Uh, I don't have a, a, an observatory as cool as Stevens yet. I am working on building a dome. Uh, which is coming soon, maybe this year. Uh, COVID's kind of slowed me down on that, and. Uh, but it's coming, and but I do lug my gear every time I observe, and oh, that's why I don't observe a whole lot. So, <laughs> um, I had a question. I see another question there from Stan Williams. Uh, what is the furthest dimmest object you have imaged? Uh, and uh, that's a great question. Uh, I did it just last night, actually. I'll show you. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a, a, a bigger color image of Hoag's object. Uh, and I have somewhere in my files. While you're doing that, Brad Sloan, friend of mine from Texas Star Party and El Dorado. What's up, man? He's been watching the Permian Basin uh, really close. So what's up, Brad? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Hey, some people from Bridge City. What's up, Bozo? How y'all doing? Uh, Good to see you. I will find this here. I have this picture here in um, just a moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you find it, man. I'll put yeah. us, I'll put us up on the screen here, and we'll answer some questions while we're uh, getting on a new, a new thing here. The Hoag's object, though, man, y'all got to see this photo. So when he brings this up, this is going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, astronomy outreach versus trying to get an A pod. Yeah, two different things. Yeah, I mean, I've given up on trying to get an A pod uh, because uh, you know I'm just not that good. There's just so many better. You know, every time like we were talking about Damian Peach earlier, every time Damian puts out something, I just want to throw my stuff away. So <laughs> yeah, he's he's really good. Um, all right, here here it is. Uh, here's the raw data um, from uh, last night. I took this image. This is raw, just straight from the camera. Um, I, I'll fully process it later. Um, but this, if you're not familiar with Hoag's object or sometimes Hoag's galaxy, is uh, it's about 600 million light years away. Just let, let that sink in there. 600 million light years. Um, so the, the asteroid impact that killed the dinosaurs was 66 million years ago. Almost ten times as uh, longer ago that the light left this galaxy, and it's a very unusual ring galaxy, uh, which we really don't understand exactly how that forms totally yet. Um, but uh, there's this this is this little thing here is part of the galaxy, as is this outer ring, and there's almost a void in between, and we really don't know why uh, mm. that happened. Uh, so it, you can maybe pull up a uh, a Hubble image here. Um, 
I don't want to get this is a this is a point that uh, Ron likes to bring up that Brad said. Stephen, you have the voice of a god. No, he says a voice of a good radio announcer. Very clear presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you, much appreciated. And also, we'll uh, we'll welcome Mr. Mark Farage to the fray while while we're chilling here for a second. What's well, up, Mark? Uh, How you doing, man? Somehow my mouth stopped working. This is like your mouth stopped working. Night, the, the mouse. This has been the night of of technical difficulties. <laughs> I ever had one. Uh, oh, man, oh man, oh man. But I think oh, I got look it. At that image. Yeah, so I that's uh, that's Hubble there. Several hour integration, and that's my little ten minute shot there. Uh, but this is tiny. It's uh, only a few arc seconds across. Um, so that's that's probably the. I, I've imaged further things that were just happened to be in the background of the thing I was actually um, pointing at, uh, yeah. but but this is the most distant thing I've ever intentionally aimed at, and that was the actual point of me trying to go there. You know, you talking about like quasars and stuff like that? Yeah, there's usually some kind of background galaxy or something. If you expose for a long time, that may be billions of light years away, some kind of quasar, uh, but they're not. They're, you're not really like get a lot of detail out of it. Yeah. What's up, Mark Jackson? Thanks for staying up with us all the way in the UK. Hope y'all are doing okay over there so far. Uh, this guy, uh, Asker, says uh, you should have been named Stephen Hubble, which is, ha. yeah. <laughs> you could have been the great-great-grandson of the man himself. Hey, yeah, right? if only. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this one, guys. Uh, you guys think we might be living in a simulated reality? No. There's, there's reasons why, but I won't go into that. We'll do a whole live stream dedicated to that. How about that, Asker? And it's not because we don't like Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, it's definitely not that. It was, well, then you don't like Elon, man. Well, but I kind of do, but I think he's cool. Yeah. He's kind of can be a jerk sometimes, but I, I like him. All right. Yeah, well, he's, in, uh, in the, he's an oddball. <laughs> he's, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get through I'm some of these comments to... here. Go ahead. If I can, yeah, can I do this? Um, Telescope slewing. Sky Safari Pro shows 23.1 light years and 106. Uh, for which object? Oh, okay, yeah, 23.1 million. Yeah, so most of the local group, like the galaxies that are sort of in our immediate area, are are part of the local group of galaxies and they're typically between two and a half million to what 30 million light years away after you get out past that most of the brighter stuff is usually about 40 or 50 million light years away and i don't know if they consider that part of the local group Stephen. is that all well the the local group is really just uh uh technically speaking andromeda uh, Triangulum and the Milky Way, uh, and then it's, right. there's satellites in between them. And uh, those three galaxies plus their little bitty ones scattered between them. That's that's basically just the local group right there. And you can kind of fit everything in there in about five million light years. Uh, but uh, yeah. the other things, um, like yeah, that's still pretty close. I would say twenty to thirty million light years. Uh, that that is still kind of in the general neighborhood. Just kind of maybe the next town over, I would say. Uh, and then uh, the Virgo cluster the, the heart of the virgo cluster is about 53 million light years away that's kind of our i guess the the center of our our larger super cluster yeah yeah absolutely it's uh we're all connected in some way but then there are massive voids in between us too and there's areas of the sky where if you put a telescope on it you'll never see a galaxy even though there are some like way 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 out there but if you're looking through a telescope you'll never see a galaxy but then if you go charging through the Virgo, Leo, Ursa Major area. It's like, whoa, was it? wow, galaxy, wow, wow, wow. You know, as you move your telescope, it's just like galaxy, 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 galaxy. But then there are areas where there are definitely not uh, galaxies like that. That's absolutely for sure. Good to have you, Jamie. What, what was it? Uh, was it I don't know. I, I've only seen it spelled, I, and I know that there's like some ump to it, but is it Boots Void or something? I know it's something like that. Boaties. Boaties, yeah. Boaties, thank you. I've never heard anybody say it aloud, so I appreciate it. Boaties Void. Or it, or you can say it Booties. Booties, which is how oh, we booties Void. Booties. Um, Constellation Booties up there. But it's like, what, 300 to 400 million light years across, and it's just nothing? Yeah, and then yeah, what's funny is you much. often you often see the Boaties Void uh 
connected with a picture of an NGC object called the ink blot. Yeah. It's and not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like here's the boot. He's void. It's like this stellar, you know, background with this black spot, and it's like no, that's the ink blot, man. That's just a dark nebula in front of a lot of stars, right? Yeah. Uh, and so you see that, but no, the Boatee's void is real. It's just, uh, it's just a void of galaxies, uh, and there's a there's a few of those around. Uh, but that's it's kind of mind boggling when you start to kind of think about how big there is a void of nothing, and you know, why? where there's. And why? Yeah. Like in why the universe are spots where everywhere else, I mean, you know, and you think about the distances anyway, but like those distances are already massive, but then to just have something that's 300 plus million light years across and just nothing. <laughs> it's like, why, what happened? What is going on there? Yeah, absolutely. It's strange. Space is weird. Every time you learn something new about space, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll bake your noodle. That's for sure. Well, look at that M64. Yeah, that's right. Woo, uh, black guy boy. galaxy. Yeah, so you can definitely see the uh, inner ring there of uh, of dust, essentially. And then there's an outer area of the galaxy that uh, doesn't really have nearly as much detail. It's just kind of big and vague and faint uh, going off there. Um, but yeah, definitely a black eye galaxy for called that for a good reason. Uh, it's also kind of a, an unusual galaxy. One of my favorite facts about it is that this part here, the dust is spinning counter to the direction of the, the stars going in the other way. And that's a sign that this this is a definitely a, uh, the result of other galaxies that have merged together. So the mm -hmm. inner ring is, or, is orbiting in the opposite direction of the outer halo, um, which isn't super common in galaxies. We know of a few other examples, but it's, it's relatively rare. How wide is the field of view of, of the telescope's camera? It's about uh, 20 arc minutes. So uh, a little bit smaller than uh, two thirds of the full moon or so. Mm, so relatively small. Go. Yeah. What's your guy's definition of nothing? Uh, the absence of anything. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, absence of absolutely anything. I guess if you want to talk about nothing in space, there's still the fabric of the universe there, right? You know, yeah. it's still a universe. So uh, if you're talking about nothing, then I guess it was what whatever is outside the universe, if you can even conceive of that. I don't even yeah. know if it's a, a valuable concept, you know. Well, because well, there, there is something has mass. You know, it's it's stars. It's you know, it's stars, planets, rocks. As far as as far as can be told, none of that seems to be there. The things that we're used to seeing, that light coming from those stars, it is just empty. Like we don't see anything. As, as far as I've ever seen, I'm I'm not dove too too deep into it, but. When it comes to that, like I realize that there's the other parts of nothing. You know, what is dark energy? What is dark matter? What are those substances? They do make up 96% of, you know, the makeup of the universe. I do get that that's there too. But when we look at it, it's just really crazy to think that there's just these big giant open spaces where there's nothing, you know, um, tangible. The things that we're we're used to be thinking of when we look out into the deep night sky like this. Yeah, and then then of course if you if you say that there is nothing out there, that's actually not true in in the the wide respect of things. Like there's, I think, uh, even in the vacuum of space, for every ten thousand square miles or something, there's one atom of hydrogen or something like that. I feel like is what I've heard. It, for anyway, it, it, the point is there for every bl uh, square block of space that you get, that's massive. There's like one hydrogen atom in it. So technically space isn't empty, even though it for the most part it is. But then like, you know, Ron brought up, you know, like you've got fields and you've got these uh, you've got Higgs bosons out there, which we know exist. We looked for them. We found them. Uh, these it's are the like, things that. Yeah, these are the things. <laughs> yeah, these are, this is the thing that gives uh, quarks their mass, you know, that makes them sticky. Um, so and space is apparently filled permeated with this uh, field of bosons, the Higgs boson, which is pretty cool. A lot of deep questions from Asger. Do you think the universe is finite or infinite? That's a good deep question. I don't know. Jane says infinite. Um, do I think that the universe itself is finite? I think the universe might be, but what we're talking about, like, uh, let's put it this way. When we look at the universe, we know that it's expanding out into something. What are we considering that next thing? What is it expanding into? So we're 96 billion light years across now. It's going into what I guess we would consider as nothing. 
But if you continue on, like one of my favorite lines that really blew me away whenever I first started learning about something was 13.8 billion years in the observable universe. That means if something is 14.6 billion light years, God, that, wow, that, uh, that went a little, a little heavy, Justin. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, delete it. Cause you've got it up yeah. on right now. Oh, do I really? Oh man. I'm sorry. Y'all. I'm yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I am so, I, that is my fault. I did, I clicked on it to try to boot this guy and ban him out. Cause he's a moron. Uh, there and you there go. you go, Justin, you got what you wanted. Saved. Yeah. Yeah. Justin Gove. <laughs> Goodbye, brother. See ya. Never, jerk. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about, you know, getting, uh, as it expands deeper and, and deeper into it, you know, what else is out there? How, how far does that go? So I think if you get beyond that, you know, what are we considering the universe? If we consider the one that we currently know, the observable universe, who knows what else is out there past that? And then there's a million different ways you can dive into that conversation. So I think there's uh, some pretty fun ones there. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Look at that, man. That detail Sick. is just is stunning. Look at you can see the the dark in the swirls coming out of the man. That's just incredible. Yeah, man. I love the the swirls in the outer layer of the galaxy too. I think that's super cool. And uh, yeah, let me let me zoom in here a little bit more on the on the little filaments in there. Zooming in a lot, but um, yeah, it's an example of a, a flocculent galaxy. Because uh, there's Ooh. really tight spirals, really, really uh, tight in there, and that's that's what we call flocculent, essentially, or it's almost uh, almost wrapped around itself uh, quite a ways. Yeah, gorgeous, beautiful, man. I mean, you can. I mean, the, the, those dusty lanes are just you know, we we look at it as dark nebula, but if you were in that galaxy, there could be pockets of it lit up brighter and more beautiful than the Orion Nebula ever could be. You know, it just depends on what's on the other side, how many stars are in that pocket, how many new fresh stars are forming, because we know that gas and dust in galaxies does form new stars. And so this is a potential, this star is, is I mean, for what this galaxy is doing is forming new stars, which is pretty awesome, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm learning that there are actually galaxies now that are, uh, Sterile, I guess they can't make new star formation because the dust and gas hey. has been removed. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's my area of research actually right now. I'm working on is research, it? But yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I, before before I go into that rabbit hole, does anyone have any any, any targets they want to see? Any recommendations? Can can we do forty five sixty five since you're right there? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, let me let me slew over there, and oh, I don't, probably don't even have to move the dome for that one. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm using our 107-inch telescope, uh, a project here with another another Stephen um, Stephen uh, Janowicki, and uh, what we're doing is we're looking uh, at a whole bunch of different galaxies that have been surveyed uh, with a uh, radio telescope, Arecibo. Actually, they surveyed. A whole bunch of these galaxies uh, for signs of uh, neutral hydrogen. Essentially, they were looking for hydrogen that is uh, available to form new stars, right? So it's got the ingredients to form stars. And uh, what we're trying to do is, uh, okay, we have we have this set of like thousands of different galaxies uh, that we know could possibly they have the right ingredients to form stars. We look at a subset of them, and we notice that they're they're not actually they're 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 uh, a lot of them are what we call red and dead, meaning they're, they're really not forming very many new stars at all. Uh, and some of them are kind of in between. And so the research question essentially is, you know, why do some galaxies form lots of stars really quickly? Uh, while do others, even though they have the right ingredients, not, you know, they're just not doing it. Um, and so the first part of that research project then is to look at these galaxies with a really large telescope uh, and, and an H alpha filter to look for any signs of star formation that we may have previously missed. And, mm. and if we do find it, then look at where it is in the galaxy. Is it in the outer parts in the spiral arms? Is it near the center? Is it spread around? Uh, and we're trying to use that spatial distribution information to kind of get an idea essentially of how galaxies evolve and see if there's any correlation between where 
uh, the galaxies are are forming stars and the rate at which they're forming stars in this particular group that isn't really doing as much as we think they should be. Um, but yeah, they uh, generally speaking, uh, gal galaxies can be categorized as uh, either uh, forming lots of new stars really fast or uh, they are um, kind of just in the middle, like maybe our Milky Way is somewhere in the middle. Uh, or they've run out of hydrogen to form stuff, and they're just not going to form any new stars anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm doing a little back-end chat here. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> All right, so I'm taking a 20-second uh, exposure here of the, the Needle Galaxy, NGC 4565. Um, it's uh, going to show up here in a second. Um, awesome. It is, it is uh, the poster child Ooh. for an edge on galaxy for sure um, oh man there you go uh yeah this textbook example of an edge on in fact uh my i have a textbook on galaxies and this image is on the cover of it <laughs> really yeah uh, is it so, the burnham burnham's uh is it burnham's uh it's uh no it's i don't remember um I forget I what remember. what on the Burnham's the there's three or four books the Burnham's uh, Deep Sky handbooks or whatever and I think it has one that on one of them on there but yeah this is a very famous galaxy man I mean this this thing is like probably my favorite object in the nighttime sky I think mm. it's a good one it's a really good one um, yeah it's a good one yeah uh, the I don't remember the textbook, but I, but I really mean, yeah, it was meant for like grad students and stuff. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, it's a great, great dust lane in there as well. It's one of my Absolutely. favorites. Vintage has a question for everybody on the panel. What is the bucket list observing object for you? Mine is to be alive for Haley's Comet's return just because, or just in 20, was it 2061? Uh, man, I don't know. Steven, what do you think? Man, uh, that's a that's a good one. Um, bucket list: uh, this the total eclipse in 2024 coming Ooh. up should be a really good one. Uh, passing through a lot of Texas as well. Uh, Where are you I, going for that one, Stephen? Uh, probably going to go to um, somewhere somewhere near Austin. I was invited to someone's home who has uh, they're they're right on on the line. So uh, sweet, helping the helping to catch it there. Uh, bucket list things. Um, Man, I want to see like a super big meteor outburst, like uh, Ooh, you know, like yeah, like the historical records of like the Perseids where they see hundreds or even thousands per hour. Uh, I want I want to see that in real life. That'd be really cool. That'd be amazing. No, absolutely. Uh, the one during the uh, the Civil War, mm -hmm. uh, either eighteen what sixty one or something. I don't know. Some somewhere back in there where they thought the world was ending, the sky was falling. That'd be pretty cool. What about yeah. you, Ron? What do you think? What do you want to see? Oh man, if I so I want to go on a, a big telescope for for the deep sky objects and actually um, see and image the Helix Nebula for myself since Cosmos was the thing that kind of started my passion. I think that would be cool just for me. Now there's obviously other stuff that I would want to see, but that would just be a really cool one, and I, would, I think would be uh, fun to be able to like to control a scope, watch it, capture it, and be like, hey, this is especially if it was one of you know, the first images I really had to play around with. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one for me. I'll have to show you that in my 22 if we ever uh, do some observing together, man, for sure. Absolutely. Put on a mask. Wash your hands. Yeah. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Come Wash on. Wash your hands. Uh, I want to be for that eclipse. Yeah, I think my, my bucket list item would be to see, like, Beetlejuice go off. Um, yeah. yeah that'd that'd be cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. But All right, who knows supernova. if that's going to happen. Yeah. Wouldn't Orion look so different without it? Oh, I know. It, would, it wouldn't even be Orion anymore. It'd be like somebody blew his shoulder up or something. He'd be like, ah, you know. But yeah, that'd be, that'd what would be we wild. Call it that'd be interesting to think of. Like one of the prime things that we've had the night sky for that long. Do you have to change the name of it? Like, does it any longer look like a dude? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what he's doing. So do we have to come up with a different name for him? That would be kind of interesting. But a, a dude that was injured that lights up the night sky. You know, as bright as you know one of the closer planets like a you know, like a venus at it's at its best pretty exciting. yeah absolutely hmm. absolutely uh jim had a request but i don't know if uh ghost of jupes is available is Hydra uh, in the sky yeah yet? uh i remember look i looked at that around um a few days ago uh yeah. give it another 20 minutes and i think it should be in a good place for the dome 
so we'll do, I'll do Ghost of Jupiter after um, after uh, the Eyes Galaxy. Oh yes, good choice, sir. Very choice. The Eyes, the which eyes. I think. I don't think I know this I, one. Yeah, it's in uh, it's in Leo. Is that right? No, it's it? uh, part of the Virgo cluster. It's part of Markarian's chain, actually. Aha. Uh -huh. so oh what, yes, it's right next to M87 or 86, whatever. Yeah. I took a nice picture of the dome there and said, uh, hey, figure out where you're pointed. And I had a hard time with that, of course. <laughs> oh, look, we got another friend of mine that just popped into the room. <laughs> What's going on, Will? How are you? How are you, man? Joe Colliff, everybody. How are you doing, dude? Doing well, man. How are you? How's everybody else? Doing great. That's good. Yeah, Joe, this is Steven. Uh, this is Ron, to a couple of good friends okay. of mine. And hey, everyone. Joe K is the Presidente of the Houston Astronomical Society. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of got my arm twisted to uh, take over the presidency this year. And so it's been <laughs> an interesting year uh, to actually act in that capacity with the COVID-19 and coronavirus response and everything else like that. But uh, always fun to be on talking astronomy with Will and all my other friends. Absolutely, Welcome. man. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Pleasure, man, for sure. Yeah, Joe's a pretty pretty astute observer. He's, I've been around Joe for a few years now. And, uh, of course, you know, I'm a member of the Houston Astronomical Society. I don't get to go over there as much as I would like to. Uh, but, you know, him being the president over there and me being the president over in Beaumont, was, so we're kind of like uh, sister clubs, if sister you will. Club. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so it's really cool. We get to work together. And they have a club that's just so far more massive than <laughs> our club. I mean, they have like, what, 700 members is that right Joe? yeah 700 members 750 when we get to our peak during the year um but you know having that many members is uh kind of a blessing and at the same time it's a bit of a challenge too right you know there are a lot of people that you've got to design programs for make sure everybody's interested and more than anything else right just trying to bring people along who are starting off on the journey of amateur astronomy and hopefully uh, lighting that lifelong passion that gets them, you know, to continue to, to pursue the, the, the hobby and everything else. So it's a lot of challenge, but it's a labor of love. So I enjoy doing it. Yeah, man. So this is your first year of being the president and, uh, and you'll be the, all through this year into next, or is it, uh, are you gonna have to run in between there? Or? I will have to run again next year. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, unless somebody says they're going to jump in and actually run for president next year, uh, I should be unopposed. But prior to that, I, I was the outreach chairperson for well, what was it, four years? So did that for a while. I'm a NASTA solar system ambassador and uh, really enjoy kind of the outreach aspect of it. Right. Getting out. And I know, Will, yeah, you do this often, uh, just taking the telescope out, pointing it at something that we take for granted a lot of times, but people have never seen before. I mean, even things like craters on the moon and just hearing people say, wow, or ooh and ah, when they see something like that is just the biggest kick there is. Absolutely. Yeah. You show a kid Saturn for the first time and That's it. <laughs> the brain explodes out of the back of their head, you know, and it's just like, that's so yeah. right out, words right out of my mouth. Will nailed it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, even adults too, I think adults sometimes appreciate it more than kids uh, depending because they're like, they're jaded to most everything. And then they see Saturn in a telescope right. and it's just, it's literally, it's no, it's a, you know, bad pun, but it's eye opening, you know? It, it is right. And we take it for granted a lot of times. It's like, Oh, there there's Saturn or there's Venus or whatnot. And we just, you know, we'll look at it, glance at it for a little while. And uh, for somebody who's never seen something like that, and we, you know, in the heart of Houston, Texas, we get a lot of visitors who will tell us, uh, you know, they're in their forties or fifties. I've never looked in a telescope before. And when they see something like, like you said, the rings of Saturn or Jupiter and its moons and to see just the, the, the awe and amazement on their faces, that's, I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, that's what I absolutely love about it. So being president of HAS is nice, but uh, the outreach chairperson uh, position was just an absolute thrill for me. And you also, Joe, won the Omega Centauri Award. I did. Yeah, that was a huge honor. You know, the funny thing is I'm in my office here and I'm looking at uh, a bunch of trophies and, and you know, acrylic uh, bits and pieces that I've won for work. And, you know, they're all great things like CEO awards and stuff like that. That Omega Centauri Award was probably the biggest kick in my life of my life. Right. It, it was completely unexpected. It was at TSP in 2017 and our former president, Renee Gadaly actually uh, presented me with that award there. And I was just awestruck. I mean, I, like I said, 
all these things over here on my uh, wall, I, I never show off, but that Omega Centauri award is one that's near and dear to my heart. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was videoing, uh, obviously, because I just, I'm constantly videoing everything. Right. Uh, but I was, I was there that year, obviously, because Joe and I set up near each other. Joe sets up with me and Mark and all of our, all of our uh, Houston buddies. And, right. Uh, and I was video and I was like, who are they going to pick? And then it was Joe. And I was like, whoa, I know, Joe. I know that guy. That's awesome. He just well, you know, the funny board. thing is, I don't know if you remember it. I see Mark's on right now. Uh, we were actually getting ready to head out to Jimmy Lowry's place to observe on his 48 inch telescope. Yeah. And at the okay. last minute I said, you know what? Nah, I should stick around. It's a Saturday night for whatever reason, just, uh, decided to, to stick around. And thankfully I did. I mean, that'd be embarrassing if uh, they, they presented me with an award and I had gone off to, observe at Jimmy's place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's kind of, where's Joe? Sometimes. He's with Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Lowry. Jimmy Lowry. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Oh, so yeah. Cool. yeah. Jimmy just lives down the road from Steven uh, Hummel. Uh, lives on oh, his own okay. mountain out there. Yeah, lives on his yeah. own mountain and uh, has his own roll roof observatory with all. It was a small little forty-eight inch dub. Yeah, just a tiny little thing. Tiny. Yeah, oh, that's a it's cool a, scope. It's a wee little scope, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, you could fit a party of twelve in there for dinner inside right. the tube, uh, right. and and still have room for the concierge or yes. whatever is at a restaurant. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's an amazing Pretty scope. Though. Yeah, yeah, the major D. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bus boy can even walk past. The yeah, song, yeah he brings you the. <laughs> We're gonna try this out. That's yeah, a it's the second best telescope I've ever looked through. I have to say, and that's a high yeah, honor. Yeah. So, so what was the first, Stephen? The eighty-two inch here. I was gonna say, yeah. and, and, you know, ironically, it's not it's not even the best telescope in that county, right? So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just uh, just up the hill, he's got scopes that are twice his size. But he that is literally one of the biggest uh, amateur run Dobsonian telescopes besides the guy in Salt Lake City. And I right. forget his name. Yeah, uh, he's got a seventy. Is it sixty or seventy two? I think it's it seventy two. Yeah, yeah seventy two. Yeah. Like All right, here's a three Man. minute exposure. There, you can really see the tidal streams coming off this galaxy here. Nice. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So two gravitationally interacting galaxies. Uh, about 50 or 60 million light years away. I didn't look it up. I'm just buying off the cuff here. You can see there is a little bit of a dust lane in the in this one. Yeah. And then, Absolutely. Uh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, one of my favorite things, if I can make it show up here, is this darker blotch. There's a big, complicated web of, of dust and gas kind of blocking some of that starlight. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Again, these are the eyes galaxies. All right. So uh, I had a request earlier for the uh, uh, what was it? Ghost of Jupiter. The Ghost of Jupes. Could the universe be a giant intelligent being? Sure. Just could like be, we could I have guess. little small galaxies in our brain. Maybe. <laughs> there you go. Do, 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 do. Right in the middle of the sky, catching it at the perfect moment. Right. There you go. So is that the telescope uh, I'm hearing slewing in the background, or? Uh, yeah, that, that whirring, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's oh, the mount. Nice. I gotta start moving the dome. Yeah, I can actually put Steven up here, which I'll do so yeah, everybody can kind of see the dome. Now, this is uh, the, the, the 16 inch Richie Critchian dome, uh, at McDonald Observatory Visitor Center. If y'all, when once this all this passes, this COVID nonsense, you can actually go out to McDonald Observatory and hang out with Steven, uh, social distance, of course. And yeah. uh, <laughs> hard to do in the dome, by the way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're working on how to do that. Uh, yeah, we'll be small groups for a while, at least for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Laura says when I saw just the fuzzy of the Orion Nebula through some binoculars, I about cried. I agree with you, Laura. When I was like nine or ten years old, I taped a broken pair of binoculars to a broken tripod. And that was my first telescope. And the first thing that I was able to, you know, bend it up to and get it on was the Orion Nebula. Because uh, yeah. I saw on a star chart that it said M42 and it showed a little fuzzy. And I was like, I got to know what it is. And so I put it on there and it and it blew my mind as a kid. And that was really, I think, about 10 or 11 years old or so. And that kind of cemented the the whole, this whole thing. This is why yeah. you're you're all having to deal with me right now. 
Uh, yeah, the funny thing you mentioned that, 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 well, you know, when I was seven, I got my first telescope and it was a 60 millimeter department store telescope. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Jason brand at all, but, yeah. uh, you know, I'd looked at the planets. I'd looked at uh, several of the planets. I, I looked at uh, the moon quite a bit and I said, you know what, I'm going to look at something that I see all the time in astronomy and sky and telescope magazine. It's going to be the Orion Nebula. And I pointed my telescope at it and I actually had the opposite reaction. I was disappointed. Because yeah. I expected to see what I saw in the magazine yeah. uh, at that time. But, you know, when you when you learn about it and what it is, how far away it is and what's going on there, you just get such a great appreciation for it. No, absolutely, man. That's 100 percent true. Uh, Jim says, noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. Joe, like Cody, has, yeah. Cody has a question that I think I can answer. Is Steven on Facebook? I think the answer is no, but he no. is on Instagram. Yeah, that's true. Which is Hummel underscore Steven at Instagram.com. No, I don't know. It's just Hummel <laughs> underscore, Hummel underscore <laughs> Steven. Yeah, <that's> right. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I get like these weird ads. I don't know why. So yeah. you know, I was on a live stream the other night with um, – Dustin Gibson, a bunch of other people. Uh, so Dustin from Op Telescopes, and uh, he had on uh, Scott Roberts, you know, the creative explorer scientific. And yeah. in his office, he has his original telescope that he bought when he was a kid that he got from Kmart that kind of started it all for him. And uh, it's funny because there's a bunch of people in there that are just amazing astronomers, astrophotographers, and, like painters, all that stuff. And right. half the people on that stream of the 10, 12 people that were on there that night, all of them still had their original telescope. But really? that's the only thing that they got from like Walmart or, you know, Something like that. And you're just like, that's where it started. Even though I'm <laughs> a company now, I just want to remember where I came from. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was a fun stream. Yeah, I just had a little cameo there. And that was that was that was really fun. It worked out well. I didn't have much time, but it was cool. It was good to have you on, man. I was stoked whenever you popped up. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to be there. And yeah, I got an eyepiece out of it. So you yeah, know, that was worth it. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty awesome and well I, very cool. it, it was cool because like you were there and then we had arsh from uh from kid observatory or kit peak um mm -hmm. observatory there was just a bunch of really cool people on there and again it was nothing that was really super planned a lot of the uh, what's cool about a lot of these live streams right now it's just hey listen man i'm going live tonight you know we can't some people have crappy cloudy skies or snowy skies like they are here <laughs> you know, yeah yeah right have, even in April, <laughs> it's um, no, I mean, it's every, we know everyone's home, here. right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> three times. How are you going to snow three times? It's just so. Anyway. But uh, uh, Fred, Francisco said, what was the name of those two galaxies? And it was the eyes, right? But do you know the NGC number off the on those? Uh, I, don't, I don't have that on top of my head, but uh, okay. you, can, you can Google. Yeah. Just the eyes. Yeah, galaxies. I'll, NGC I'll 4435 and 4438. Oh, thank you, Joe. Look Didn't at have that off the top of my head, but I'm quick on Google. So, <laughs> you know, uh, Will? yeah. What's up, Mark? Can I, this, can, I give it, can I give this a shot? Yeah. Let's see here. I'm gonna try to share my screen. I don't know if it's gonna work though. Sure. We have we have dual telescopes going here yeah, in a bit. Application window. Uh, I can just do the entire screen. Probably just the application window. Well, yeah. Let's do that. Uh, Aaron. Ask a cool, cool question while Mark's getting that ready, Stephen. Can you find extrasolar planets with that 16? Yeah, it is possible to find um, uh, extrasolar planets, even with uh, telescopes smaller than this. People have done it with 8-inch telescopes. Um, you can do it with the transit method. If you know that this, the planet is going to cross in front of the star and the, and the star is going to be a little dimmer, you can measure it that way. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the easiest way. Uh, there are other methods, but there are a lot tougher uh to do you need spectrographs and stuff like that usually which uh we could use on this telescope but we got bigger ones for that oh hey you no, got uh, 51 in there there it yep. is yeah that's what we're working on. Yep. so mark is using a uh, oh. night vision astronomy uh style thing where steven is taking pictures and letting the aperture stay open letting the photons fall in mark has uh, a Gen 3 night vision uh, apparatus on a 25-inch telescope with an, uh, an iPhone or a cell phone basically running his video feed, which is amazing. Um, so that yeah, is an actual yeah. live view. Yeah, the interesting thing is this is what you see at the eyepiece, right? When you're looking at it. 
And uh, it's it's so brilliant, such a different view than what you're used to with regular eyepieces. I remember, uh, I think we were at Texas Star Party three years ago, Will, when we mm -hmm. were looking through Mark's telescope at this very object and, and everything's just so bright. We thought we had discovered a, a supernova <laughs> in that gap, yeah. but it was just, you know, everything's coming out so much brighter than it normally does, so. I agree, Ron. Uh... <laughs> And Chris says, as a vendor, Explorers Times have been a great ambassador for the hobby and profet and profession. Glad to know them. Absolutely. Scott's a great guy, man. I'm going to see if I can change to just sharing the entire screen. Okay. And see if I'm I can look up a different object. Catch up on some of these comments real quick while we're here. Jane says, believe it or not, my old Tasco is great for fast images with a smartphone. There you go. The, huh. the old famous orange Tasco brand. Tasco, yes. I had a Tasco that when I was a little kid, uh, it was broken, so I converted it into a bazooka for when we played guns. <laughs> nice. Because that's what we did. Brian Lippy calls this. Is the sombrero you think above the tree? Let's look and see if it's above the tree. Uh, I've got the sombrero in mine right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Let's see it. Let's compare and contrast and, and bring notes here. <laughs> okay. Taking your image. To... Sorry, Asker. So, so I'm aware we've got a 16 inch RC that we're doing imaging on, and a 25 inch F4 Dob with a night uh, Gen 3 night vision eyepiece and an iPhone. Correct? Yeah, that's quite a setup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're both nice setups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, where it's it's a compare and contrast thing. Where Stephen has you know a research grade telescope. Mark has a visual telescope that. Right you know, we all love and, and know and love. In fact, this picture right here that's behind uh, everybody is me. I'm pretty sure this is me at Mark's telescope at TSP. Uh, several oh, really? Years ago. Yeah. And uh, it's a one shot uh, image that's a, like a self portrait. And uh, obviously it was cold at night. I'm wearing my bomber hat. <laughs> and uh, but uh, Mark's telescope is is nothing to, to shake a stick at whatever that saying means. I don't know. But uh, it's it's definitely uh, when you walk up to the eyepiece without the night vision, without anything in a 25 inch telescope, it it burns a hole in your retina. Yeah. The, the photons are so bright. So it's really, really cool. I missed the virtual feed from Neef, Brian. Did anybody else catch that? I no, I did not. i will be interested to see how they did that. Like, There's not yeah. really too many people that have done like a conference virtually yet they've done some things that are kind of in the area like like yuri's night did a virtual thing but that's not a conference that's just an event so you can yeah. kind of play around with the interviews and stuff but i'd be interested to see what they're what they're doing with it because Absolutely. i mean there are a few organizations that when it comes down to it we may have to look at that eventually like what are we going to do if this thing's still around right. in the yeah it's it's going to be tricky to work around there's yeah there's no substitute for some of these things you know and uh, there's no substitute for just seeing a real night sky either. I mean, this is fun right. and all, but but you shouldn't think that this is all there is to it if you're just watching this. No, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great point, Stephen. Like, you know, these objects look cool and stuff. But if if we were all together and under the sky together in the in the darkness out there, it really is a special thing. And it, it, it really becomes kind of like a uh, almost a spiritual experience for lack of a better term. It's just like right. you you feel the dark, you feel the universe all around you. And it, it becomes just this incredible experience. And while this is fun, it's no, there's no analog, uh, unfortunately for, for what we do out there, but it's a game changer. Man, have, yeah. have, have any of you ever driven somebody to a dark sky before that they've never, like if they've never seen it and then not be like, what have I been missing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. every single time like once you, once you realize it especially if you've you know i grew up in west virginia man so i had a, a, a pretty cool place with some dark skies obviously green banks there uh so there's some awesome stuff but if you get i we live in uh, colorado springs so there's okay skies here but i can drive an hour away and then show people you know the night skies and really get to show it to them or if we decide to do it with uh you know like our astronomical society because we have uh Colorado Springs Astronomical Society is the one that puts on Rocky Mountain Star Stair, for those that don't know. Um, Gardner, which is this big, I think it's 60-some plus acres that the uh, uh, that the group owns. And just to take just to go out there whenever you want to, which is a really cool perk of being a part of that astronomical society. It's like, yeah, go ahead, just you know, let us know. 
Um, right. and to be able to go out there and show people dark skies like that, they just, without a telescope, just will blow their minds. It's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, no, we can't see anything on your screen, Mark. It's just, uh, it's just your chair from what I'm, from where I'm seeing. Yeah. Whoops. Uh, oh, I just hit here? mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I did something. What did I do? Oh, yeah, we were looking I, I at that. Uh, looked like the Sombrero Galaxy through seasons. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, I oh, hit okay. mine, so his could come up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do what you got. And, and Andy <clears throat> says, uh, Andy says the Sombrero looks nothing like this in a six-inch refractor. That is true. There's no substitute for aperture, right? <laughs> there is no substitute <laughs> for horsepower. There you go. <laughs> Jimmy Lowry. That's a, that's a Jimmyism. In fact, that's going on a shirt at some point with uh, like, quote, Jimmy Lowry. Yes. No, there is no substitute for horsepower. Because whenever you walk up to his eyepiece and you look at something, you're like, oh, my God. you know. And, it, and he's, he'll say that. There's no substitute for horsepower. It's great. It's great. The accent that only he can, yeah. The, the, <laughs> but it's seeing some of these galaxies, mm -hmm. galaxies, right, where you've got the light spread out over a much larger area. You know, being able to, to collect so many more of those photons makes a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing any comments here, real quick, while we're in between views. There was actually uh, one a minute ago that I know I don't know if you saw it or not, but Jane had asked a little bit. Oh ago, yeah, yeah. About nine thirty-seven, uh, she wanted to know how she joins the live and uh, could share her display screen with you, uh, possibly. Yeah, thank you, you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Uh, yeah, uh, Jane, just get with me, um, and we can definitely get you in on one of the next ones. And uh, all you really have to do is uh, be able to share your your screen somehow. And uh, you should be able to do that. Or you can just webcam like we are and uh, be on here with a bunch of weird dudes, I guess. You know, <laughs> we're not too weird. We're not, we're not too weird, just a little. Well, just we'll like, give it a few more hours as we go into the night. We'll see how weird <laughs> it gets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Ken Churchill's a good buddy of mine. Night sailing on Lake Superior past Devil's Island. Like being in the ocean. More stars than you could ever imagine. I bet you, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. I think Mark's still working on his view there, uh, Stephen. If you want to maybe okay. throw yours back up. All right, I'll throw it back up here. Brad says he took his kids to TSP in 2011, and it was cloudy every night. 2012, oh, TSP oh. was clear every night. Go figure. That's just the way it goes, isn't it? Yeah, that's too bad. You can't win them all. No. and In fact, I went to a star party, uh, Okitex 2018. It was a nightmare, uh, a nightmare. Uh, we had two hours of observing in 10 days wow. and people were getting stuck with their RVs on the field and their trucks and their cars. And uh, it was bad. It rained or misted every day, all day. Horrible. Now, I will admit, and maybe I'm a bad person for saying this, right? But that one cloudy night at every star party, it's usually one of the funnest night th nights there is. Right? <laughs> depending yeah, on who, right. yeah, depending on who you're hanging out with yeah, exactly. and um, and what's going on. You what's know, there's a lot. On, yeah. There's a lot of ins and outs yeah. in this, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but no, it, it is a lot of fun. You know, sometimes uh, karaoke happens at these things, and yeah. uh, we get yelled at. It's hilarious. Yeah, I've got, I've got some real interesting going on right now hey, in the hey sky. Guys, if you want to, yeah, there's something going. Did you see that too? What? Whatever that is going past, uh, there's something swinging on by the uh, some vertical. Oh, right now. is it? Is it Starlink? I don't know. Yeah, it's a satellite. Some kind of satellite. I didn't oh. catch anything from my location. It didn't. Nothing showed up. Um, but uh, I was showing the whole sky view here. Uh, you can see uh, this is this is from where I am. Uh, that's the zodiacal light over there. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, but, and there's a little bit of glow there from some low clouds over the yeah. Permian. Uh, but these lines, that those aren't clouds. Uh, that's air glow. Oh. Yeah, so this nice, is a really dude. deep exposure. Yeah, you can't see any of that uh, with the eye. That's all just um, air itself glowing. And you can see that there's some banding. Uh, and that's a, it's a, basically a, a pattern in the high upper atmosphere on the edge of space that's making that. Yeah, gravity uh, waves, right, in the air. Gra yeah. I was just about to mention that. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so, gravity waves. So I, I, got some, uh, I got some controversy with the gravity waves, and I had a lot of really smart people tell me gravity waves 
are impossible to see. Uh, and no. I'm like, gravitational are impossible to see. Gravitational like, waves. Yeah, gravitational right. waves are totally different. Gravity good try, waves. Rolf. Yeah, you can see them. <laughs> you are I'm correct. calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big difference between those two. Yeah. George says Soki Tex, and that was the name that we put on it, man. Oh, that but was awful. That, that was, uh, and Mark was there. Mark was uh, right next to me. Oh, the that's, whole the time, but... that's the most I've ever paid for a haircut. Twenty four hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He went and got a haircut in Clayton, New Mexico. That was it. That was and that was it. <laughs> and we, we showed up. We showed up like two days early, and Steve and I we like pulled the twenty five out, and we're like, "Oh my god, this guy's amazing!" And then all of a sudden, like this cold breeze came in, and that was it. The rest of the week was socked. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we 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 haul butt. Uh, and Chris Davis brings it up. You know, I made a video on that star party, and how do you make a video on a star party when there's no stars? But actually, that was actually one of my best videos, in my opinion, because there was so much other stuff that was happening that it kind of added to the drama of that whole experience. And at the beginning, you see me and Mark and everybody were all racing to get to the area so we can set up and start viewing because we knew it was going to be clear. And then the weather was iffy for the next couple of days, and it never got clear again. I mean, the wind came out of nowhere, and it was horrible. The Okie Tech's great flood. <laughs> so Brian said scotch happens on rainy nights. Yes, scotch and, and then sun, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Brian happens happens to uh, have scotch just laying around all over. He has like a space <laughs> in his eyepiece case for scotch too. Right. Right. Keep it in a Teleview uh, case, right? <laughs> Tell Teleview makes their own scotch. I don't know if y'all were aware of that. <laughs> it's aged fourteen years, but uh, aged, aged fourteen, yeah, fourteen light years. <laughs> fourteen light years, absolutely, yeah. Wow, <laughs> it's made it's made from alcohol from the Orion Nebula. <laughs> Ooh, where are we going here? The crowbar. Ooh, yes. I was actually trying to imaging, trying to image this one the other night. Uh, with longer exposures. It barely squeezes in, field of view. Jane's right. The clouds do uh, allow you to socialize a little bit, and I think that's an important part of star parties. You know, is the social aspect of the event. You know. Um, the, the this right here, the the people hanging out with each other and conversing and learning and sharing knowledge. Um, you know, that's a, it's an extremely powerful thing, man. It really, really is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, observing through your own telescope is fantastic and learning as much as you can. But when somebody says, hey, come take a look at this, right? And you take a look at their eyepiece and you're talking about what it is and just fascinated by, you know, this thing that you either have read about and never seen or, or, or whatnot, but just getting that chance to, to learn and then share that experience with somebody else is just the best. You know, I was thinking about that earlier today, actually. I was thinking about how, like, you know, I mean, I'm so deep into this hobby that it just kind of almost seems like I can't imagine ever starting or ever thinking when I started that I was going to be where I am now. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, would I ever make that kind of investment or that kind of, you know, it just seems like just unfathomable. Yeah. And yet, you know, and yet here but we you are. did get a good deal on that scope, Mark. I got to say, man, that's a that was a pretty banging deal. So let's bring up a, a view from his telescope real quick. Oh, yeah. look what it is. That happens to be the Sombrero Galaxy. How about we go to St. Catherine's Wheel? If you, oh. if you set up near Mark, you'll hear telescopes luring to target all night long. Yeah, but you'd also, <laughs> I did that, you'd also hear all your own voices, which would be really annoying. <laughs> you know, you'd be like... Telescope slew complete. Let's use the paddle here and do a little centering. Uh, Zia, the horse head nebula is too low, unfortunately. Yeah, we if we just... Our opportunity a little to. earlier, we could have done that. If you have a, if you have a, um, a nebula you want to do, we'll... Those stars Nebular? look a bit bloated. Do they look a bit bloated? They do look a bit yeah, bloated. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know, you're under a lot of haze in Houston, so it's uh that's to be no, I think it's just the focus system just right. Oh, okay, okay. Um I just Thomas also says when I greetings from America, so. Thomas says greetings from tropical Colorado Springs. Oh, welcome. Why does that sound less than true, Ron? <laughs> um <laughs> Because uh, Thomas knows that we had snow a couple times this week, and then, uh, I believe we got hail today. So, wow. yeah. Nice. 25, 27. But if there's a specific um, 
Nebular. Nebular. If, if y'all have a nebular I, request, I can, get a nebular. I can put the I can put the H alpha back on. Um, yeah, somebody request a good nebula while we're checking out Steven's view here. So this is the crowbar, huh? Yeah, the crowbar galaxy. Very very distorted uh, galaxy. You can see why it gets its name too. Another good name. Uh, and uh, it's a little longer exposure coming in here. Just a one, two, three. There we go. A little bit longer, and you can see it's got this long stream kind of going off of it. Mm -hmm. kind of up there too. Let me restretch here, kind of medium. So yeah, it's a it's an interesting one. Lo uh, starburst galaxy too. Lots of star formation happening right. Right there at the center. Yeah. Big ol' uh, what looks like H two regions down at that bottom. Uh, at I guess the the crowbar part, the the crow of right. the crowbar part, right <laughs> down there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can see it's that's a uh, very unusual shaped galaxy. Yeah. This one's probably uh, an an arp, maybe because it's so peculiar, huh? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if it is an arp. Um, perhaps. What's yeah, up, Patrick? Maybe. Uh, this is not the hockey stick, I don't think. Is it? I don't think this is the hockey stick. I think that's a different one. That's the whale. Is this that is the whale. Oh, the whale. On the, I think this. Oh no. It's got several names. I, I'm going to Google it. Uh, I can't remember if this, if this is the same one. I call it the crowbar, but mm -hmm. it does look like a hockey stick as well. Now it was, and in your defense, it was named the crowbar in your software there too. So yes, it was. Oh yeah, it is also called the hockey stick out. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. They're gotcha. the same thing. Gotcha. There's, it's like there's a bunch of hamburger galaxies too. We got to be careful of which one we're right. talking about. <laughs> but what's cool is any of those ones we see on tonight from Steven's stream is a McDonald hamburger. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that joke from us earlier, so I was just hoping it okay. would land better. It, it it landed slightly better, which is good. A little bit. I don't get better with it. So. Hamburger joke, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I would like a McDonald's hamburger, but I'm just too scared. Uh, one of these yeah. days we'll go back. <laughs> I don't want to have to Lysol my burger wrapper before I eat it. You know that that something about that seems unappealing to me. Yeah, coronavirus might not be the worst thing you can get from. Uh, hey, can you all see that? Right. <laughs> yes. That's Hickson sixty-eight. I see three. I can see three looking at my phone. I don't know how the airplane is making it back to the stream, but yeah, if you uh, I can't switch. I don't yeah, know. I can't see your stream there. Mark. Oh, sorry. Dur, dur, dur. Okay, hold on. You got you got a shirt. Uh, yeah. There we well, go. Cat, cat nebula. <laughs> me out. All right, gents, I gotta hop off here. I gotta get to work and uh, do some editing. It was awesome hanging out with you guys tonight. I'll probably have this on in the background actually while I'm doing that. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank yeah, Ron. You guys rock. Good, good, good chat with good you, Ron. Good, good to see you, brother. See ya. So, Will, I think that um, you need to put my screen up. Yeah, uh, doing that now. There you go. There you go. It, it looks oh, better. Four. Looks better right at the phone because this star yeah. in the center is a bit overexposed, and you can see that movement. That's just the scintillation. That's the byproduct of light amplification. But I can see one, two, three, four, in the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I can, I can make those out too. That's yeah. that's impressive. Absolutely. And just from an iPhone, that's or a cell phone, that's pretty great. Wow, that's incredible. So let me see where else we want. I can go to Hickson sixty one. Is the monkey right. head too low for you there, uh, uh, Mark? Or is it it's too low for me? I don't know about yeah. him. Yeah. But... I do the whale. Uh, I was actually going to go there too. I'm gonna compare. Compare and contrast. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, while Steven's heading there, we'll watch the live of Mark's scope doing all the work for him there. Oh, okay. oh, it, oh, oh, down. Well, this is actually down. in the 98% <laughs> humidity of Montgomery, Texas. Oh, just my gosh. Houston. So I'm like in, still in the light dome pretty much, right? Wow. But, you know, like I said to Will, if you have to decide between a large aperture telescope and really expensive high quality night vision, pick both. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that phone. it's just like that. Just like that quote in uh, Contact when he's like, "Why build one of these things when you can have two at twice the price?" Exactly right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Jane. This is uh, Mark's view right here. Is a uh, a Gen three uh, white phosphor night vision scope. It's only really oh, used okay. for military use. 
but uh, Mark is using it uh, to amplify ancient photons, which is a much better use, in my opinion. I think so. Um, it's fillless and it's also uh, spotless. So, but unlike, too. Other, unlike other people who paid like eight thousand dollars for that, I just worked with my guy at ReadyMade uh, Resources, and I just like sent it back over and over and over again until I got one that was just like he was like, "Dude, you're gonna love this one. This is awesome." So, um, it worked out. Yeah, and you can definitely see the whale right there kind of going up and down. Yeah, um, totally. I can't see the pup. I mean, I can kind of see the pup. It's down uh, to the right. Like, I see it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's down yeah, by that, that bright star to the right. right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just to the right of it. And so yeah, that's my what image we're... is rotated, but... Yeah, Sorry, so let's, let's take a look at that. There we go. There we go. <laughs> now, now let's compare and contrast. Let's be real here. What Mark is showing us is kind of what you're going to see at the eyepiece. If you go to an, even in a massive telescope, it's a dimmer yeah. kind of galaxy, more diffuse. In an image, though, uh, Stephen can bring out way more detail because you know it can. The aperture can stay open, or the opening can stay open for longer and catch more photons. Yeah, he's using an iPhone, so. You know, I have a clear advantage, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I mean that is that is more like what it really looks like in uh, in the in the telescope, even with uh, a, a pretty powerful telescope. Um, I mean, it's it's important to note though. I, go, I mean, back to when, mine. I took a longer exposure. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say when just when you're looking through the eyepiece. I mean, when you first start off in the hobby, I think you kind of look through the eyepiece and like everybody else is like, "Whoa, do you see that?" And you look there and you're like, yeah. "I don't see anything," and you feel yeah. kind of like left out. But um, you know. Once you learn how to use averted vision and you learn how to move your eye around the eyepiece and blink and be patient, like mm -hmm. a lot of this, a lot of that little nebulous, like almost nebulosity type looking surface brightness of the clumps in between the stellar regions of that galaxy, there's like inky, bloody detail in yeah. there all across that. And, and it's, yeah. it's really, it's visible, um, even though it's not like apparent through the iPhone, but I mean... But well, it's, it's an interesting point you bring up, Mark, right? Because a lot of people say, you know, novice amateur astronomers, I mean, novice amateurs, right? We're all amateurs to, but uh, to, to varying degrees, you know, Mark, myself, Will, at least. And I think what people lack is not necessarily the ability to, to, to observe and, and to train themselves. It's the patience, right? Uh, right. Too many people just want to take a look and then move on to the next object as opposed to just sitting there and then giving your, your brain really a second or you know, several seconds to kind of collect what you're looking at and, and, and start to think about it, right? You'll, you're amazed at how many more things just appear the longer you just stare at the eyepiece. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the longer you look, the more you see. And that's what I yeah. tell every guest who looks through the telescope. Take your time. Yes. They, they expect instant results. And you can see these things. You, you really can, but it just takes the practice and then you kind of have to know know the tricks you gotta see a few things right. beforehand to really get the most out of it but it's a hobby that that you, you just keeps giving you know you know, I mean, the thing, the other thing too is it's kind of like golf you know you always can come back to it yeah you know mm -hmm. like yeah. You know, once you learn how to play golf or whatever like once you learn how to do astronomy and it's not like your equipment ever really goes out of style i mean well that was one of the things that bothered me when i did a lot of outreach right people would wait in line for i mean upwards of 20 minutes if you know there, there were events that we do in the heart of downtown houston that would have uh seven eight hundred maybe close to a thousand people that showed up and uh, they wait in line at a telescope to, to look for 20 minutes and then they get to the eyepiece if you're like a, a two-second glance and they move on i'm like no hold on <laughs> yeah. Come back here. take a look exactly. tell me what you see right tell me yep. what, you see. what is it that you see uh, what colors do you see? And and I like to ask people those questions because then they don't feel rushed a, to, to just move on and let the next person look. But, you know, it gets them to, to start thinking about what it is they're seeing as opposed to just saying, yeah, I saw it and move on to the next telescope. Yeah, absolutely. I do the same thing. We do a lot of outreach here. We get hundreds of visitors a night. And, yeah, it, it frustrates me when people yeah. don't don't take their time. I always yeah. encourage them, just wait, wait, yeah. see what you can see. I was asked, yeah, what did you see? <laughs> <laughs> if they can't answer, I'm like, no, go back, take a look, right? You you at least get 30 seconds at the eyepiece oh, yeah. uh, if you've waited in my line for more than five minutes. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I yeah. wish I could take some of that noise out by dropping the gain a bit and increasing the exposure. Is that 4565 mark or what is that? Uh, yeah, it's the splinter, I think. Yeah. The natal? Oh, the splinter? Needle. Okay. Splinter. Yeah, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, John... Oh man, I can't remember. He's got a big twenty-four or whatever uh, over at Okitex. He like 
he messaged me. He's like, is that 45, 65? He's like, man, that, that thing looked look really good. <laughs> John, it's not John Talbot, is it? No, 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 no. It was, uh, um, I can't remember his name. He's the guy with a really big beard. Really cool guy. I mean, John, like John Love? Not or... John Love. No, the other John. <laughs> There's so many Johns. Yeah, like Stevens. I got, I got, I got the other John. We oh, got more okay. Johns at Star Parties than we, they got Stevens on Mount Locke. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Cody asked a question about five minutes ago. I don't know if we got to it. How well can you see the galaxies in Markarian's chain? Yeah. Oh, did well, we do through, it the other day? We did that the yeah, other day, right? Yeah, through Mark's scope, we can see it actually really well. But through Stevens, he's so zoomed in, you'd only ever get one or two or three uh, at the most uh, out of Markarian's. But yeah, Mark can you show it pretty well. You can't squeeze what them all in there. there Steven? I'm sorry? What's the focal length in there? The field uh, it's 3.6 meters native, but I don't have a reducer, so it's more like three meters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is it the is sunflower, by the way, M63. Amazing. Wow. Just look at that. So Another pretty. beautiful grand design spiral galaxy. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they actually reclassified it from flocculent to grand design. They uh, actually in the infrared, it looks really different than it does in the visible we have here, yeah. which is kind of a unique yeah. feature of this galaxy. Yeah. Um, Jim says that is flocculent. <laughs> yes, it's very flat. Well, <laughs> yeah, vis in the visible spectrum, it is like the definition of flocculent, but uh, but in rea and in infrared, it just looks so different. It's really strange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why do you Zia, Zia, sorry, Andromeda is not up yet. Andromeda probably yeah. won't be up until midsummer at past midnight. Is that right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, uh, we just can't really see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, Jim. I see you saying, "Wow, yeah." You, uh, uh, there's some there's some interesting papers about it. Yeah, if you if you look at it in the infrared, it's just it, the, the the infrared spiral paths don't follow the visible spectrum all it's really it's really uh very yeah, strange it's really weird because i can see like a giant dark lane in andromeda in my scope just even like just visually with like a 21 ethos mm -hmm. like, i can see like the piece in between the, the spirals you know right but it's not like necessarily like um not like the picture you know of course right yeah so how much of markarian's chain do we have in here hmm well i see one yeah for sure <laughs> yeah that's Which like m80 that? something or other 83 oh there's three okay. right there yep. yeah one two three there four cool hmm markarian likes his chains though that's for sure yes. <laughs> even though we only ever had one i think and markarian is off the chain y'all Oh, boo. boo. <laughs> Mark's got that's, them dad jokes on lockdown. That's what Larry man. would say. Larry would say, I'm Mark Curry. He's, he's I've been working on these all night, guys. Give me a break. <laughs> I'll be here all night. <laughs> and most of the day tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so what else do you guys want to see? Where are we going next? Uh, I'll let you I'll let you go for a while. I'm gonna let my scope uh, cool off for a little bit. Get rid of some of that um, astigmatism in that view by oh, letting it. Cigar. Event. Yeah, that's a good one. The cigar. Yeah, we yeah. could do the owl. We could do some nebulas. Like the uh, you know the night vision really just loves nebulas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those emission yeah. targets. Yeah. It really it really does a good job with. Uh, I mean, listen, like I like galaxies. I like seeing galaxies from Montgomery, Texas, inside the Houston sky glow for sure. But if I go out of like Texas Star Party and I look at galaxies, I never use night vision. I just use glass. Yeah. You know, we, we 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 joke out in the in the field that this is uh this is the digital version of observing and the analog version of observing is just putting your eye up to the eyepiece. Right. And in a lot of ways, you know, like what Steven is doing is digital astronomy too. Uh, so there's, there's several different ways you can do digital astronomy and it, you know, it's every, every way has its own pros and cons and, and, and good and bad. So, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I really started out as a visual observer and I love astrophotography, but, um, I still, I still go back to looking through the telescope, you know, the old fashioned way. Cause Check that, out. that looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's great. That's awesome. 
That's very which one? Cool which one is this, Mark? So yeah, you can see some some modeling in there for sure from the little dust lanes within it. Absolutely. Yeah, look at that. Is there like you can't or... turn your the screen owl. sideways? The owl, the owl is up, huh? Right, the owl nebula. Yeah, the owl. Jim, Jim is uh, screaming for the owl. <laughs> Woo! Jim, we did uh, two out of the three of the Leo trio earlier. Unless you want to see it in his scope. But yeah. I Look can only fit one of them going. at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> ding ding. Ding ding. Yeah, okay, so I think that the owl. Hmm? Uh, what kind of mount is that? Uh, it's a Servo Cat three. Al Altaz, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, so there's the nebula. I mean, I can definitely see it because it, it's it's non-stellar. It's a foreground type thing. But I'm gonna just throw the H alpha in and see what it see what it does. Oh, there you go. See if it pops. While he's doing that, I'll show everybody. Oh, don't uh, don't Steven pay attention screen. to me. <laughs> Are uh, you doing some uh, you doing some guiding there? So guiding I'll is just one kind of the, calibrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guiding is a very important. Although I guess nowadays is maybe not so important. Uh, At this focal length, it's required. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if I had a, a smaller scope or something. Maybe I could get away with it, but, uh, but even you, with that start, paramount, huh? Yeah, even with the paramount, if you're doing three meters or more, uh, well, I mean, the scope weighs 130 pounds or something, wow. you know, uh, and and if, if the seeing is really good, as it's actually getting really like sub arc second right now, you know, even the paramount can struggle. So yeah. always guide. Always That's crazy. Guide. Yeah, I think we've missed out on uh, Omega Centauri though, right? For the evening. Uh, not for the. Actually, no, it's, it's not up yet. Cool. It's, it's not, not up yet. yet. Yeah. Not up yet. Okay. Yeah, it's too low from a dome. I love looking at it from here, but um, yeah, the dome wall blocks it. Uh, let me go to eighty-two in here. <laughs> well, that's right. Dirk, yeah. uh, for some reason, Dirk I, is, so, oh, go ahead. How bad the you know the quarantine is. I, I'm thinking we're in May. So. <laughs> 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 My internal clock's like a month ahead. It is March 91st, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, Dirk says, do these count towards our AL Messier Award? I ah, guess if you wanted them to, uh, if you wanted them to, all you'd have to really do is note what you saw, when and where, and on what equipment. And what equipment? I don't see, one. Yeah. I don't see why well. not, especially if it was during quarantine. There you go, dude. That's the owl that nebula. Oh, uh, well, no, then again, for the Messier, go-to's not allowed. So. Well, it's frowned upon, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, so Mark, Mark is going to manually move his telescope on our back. Hey, let, me you, let me tell you what, guys. I spent 10, I mean, not more than 10, but like 15 years of my life doing outreach, teaching lab classes at universities, running the Southwest Texas Observatory, starting Texas Central Texas Astronomy Club. I've done every messy object in the sky, and I can do them with a Telerad. I don't have a single AL pin, and I could care less. I mean, I appreciate the people who go through all that, but... At this age and this stage of my life, this is just about enjoying the sky and enjoying the, the fantastic people I'm with, the fellowship around all these guys and girls yeah. who, who are from all over the world doing all different kinds of things. It's just that's really what it's about for me. I try not to keep track of what I do and yeah. just enjoy it. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, Will's always got his camera. And I always wonder, like, man, you know, is it wonder if he enjoys stuff as much as I do? Because he's got to worry about am I shooting? Am I at the right angles? The lighting? You know, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm the same way. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I did a lot of visual observing, but I never really went through the whole certification process and, and got all of those things. I, I just kept track of it myself, and that was my own reward. And I'm not trying to, like, you know, say don't do it or anything, because if it helps you, you could go for it, absolutely. Uh, so but it's not necessary. Play, yeah, I'll play devil's advocate here. I, I will say that for me, there was a period of time when I stepped away from amateur astronomy, as, as a lot of us do, you know, in our 20s and whatnot. Um, but getting back into it, I found that many of the AL programs gave purpose to my observing, right? So I could say, this is what I want to observe. And, and you know, rather than just kind of hopping from one object to another, you know, obviously these things are usually grouped for, for a reason. There's, there's some logical group into it. But, uh, you know, having something to kind of drive what you're observing that night was really kind of useful for me to get back into it. So, but I see both sides. I mean, I, I'm at the point now too, where it's like, you know what, I like just going out and pointing the telescope at whatever it is I want to look at and, uh, you know, having fun with everybody else who's out there. 
I'm just going to go to this, whatever this is, LDN 1311. Okay. LDN, that's, that's like, a dark nebula. Dark nebula, yeah. Yeah. Let's just see a dark what, nebula. We've got, uh, Let's see what we get there, you know. 82 in here if you want to flash my screen. Yeah. There's that 82. Why is that so beautiful? Yeah, mm. lumpy, uh, lumpy cigar there. Some, yeah, some weird that. stuff going on. You can see a uh, lot more, yeah. But uh, I wanted, I wanted to kind of flash my specs here and brag a little bit about my site. Uh, this is, this is a measurement of the seeing in arc seconds right now at the bottom line. Wow. Zero point six five. So, uh, if you don't, if you don't know anything about what that means, if it's better than one, that's a, that's an incredibly good. That's and the exciting, best, yeah. Like Hawaii is at the very best point five. Uh, like Mauna Kea. So wow. right now we have um, near perfect seeing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, man. Yeah, it's look how great. tiny those stars are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pinpoint is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so uh, I think we can real, make it out there in time to, to take advantage of it from Houston right now, can we? <laughs> if we start driving yeah. right now, we'll be right there now. in 12 hours. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would, I would add to the, the, the AL award discussion. I'm a, I'm a master observer, which means I've done 10, uh, awards from the astronomical league. And it took me about nine years to do that. Yeah. And like Joe said, I used it as a, something to give me a reason to go out and, uh, a list of things that I needed to go look at. So I started with the Messiers like everybody else does. Yeah. Um, and then I went to the Caldwells and then I went to the Herschel's uh, while I was doing all that. I was doing solar observing and lunar observing and, you know, and all these different things and, and carbon stars and stuff like that. So it was it really it helps you kind of branch out. You know, a lot of us get stuck on the faint fuzzies. There is other stuff to look out there, at, yeah. you know, like the moon and and even the sun, those two solar awards that I did. I did the solar the white light solar, uh, you know, one, and then I did the H alpha one and both of them were fantastic. And I recommend both, but as, as somebody who, you know, already, I, like, like Mark said, I already knew how to use a telescope and all this stuff. So it wasn't a big deal, but it did hone my skills. Uh, the double star award was, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's serious. You don't I realize hated how serious it. that is until you get into it. I hated yeah. it, man. I hated it. I was like, what is position angle and like, I, you know, it was separation, yeah. but after learning it and learning how to get all that stuff. And then I got to the point where I was guessing I'd go to the eyepiece. I'd put the star, the telescope on a double star. And then I'd guess uh, what the position angle was. I'd guess the brightness of both stars and I'd yeah. guess the, uh, the separation. And it got to the point at the end of the award, there's a hundred objects, I think on that award. Yep. And toward the end of the award, uh, my last 10 or 15, I was within, you know, less than 10 of each of those numbers. Really? So I would I would wow. get super close in separation, super close in magnitude and uh, e even better sometimes in position angle. Uh, and it, they were all I would I would look at it and I'd measure it and I'd go right down my guesses and then I'd go to uh, Sky Safari or some other software and I'd look and then I'd write down the actual. And I was like, oh, my God, there's a couple of times where I nailed it. But right. there was very, very few. But that's what those awards teach you. It's going to teach you how to do it wrong at first. And that's OK. Do it wrong. Yeah. As you go, you're going to do it right and do it more right and then more right. And then yeah. now you're like an expert at that particular thing. So there is a there is two sides. I know a lot of guys like Mark that would rather just go and observe. And that, you know, that's a totally legitimate thing. Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, to your point, Will, it's it's forced me, and I'm not going to say forced as if you know they, they they twisted my arm, but it's forced me to look at things and get an appreciation for certain types of objects that I would just probably never look at before, right? Like you say, double right. stars. There's nothing really exciting about double stars, but then you're reading about the double stars you're looking at, and you're seeing kind of like the disparity between the two stars that you're seeing in the field of view, or the three, or however many there are. It's like, wow, this is actually pretty fascinating, right? So, no, I'm with you on that one. Now, I yeah. see. Uh, it also says that tempting the universe sampler has given me purpose too. I have no clue about the, uh, all that is out there. It's feeling a bit lost in the universe. No, you're right. I mean, that's a great thing. It used to be for a lot of us, we had to start off with the Messier and mm -hmm. uh, the universe sampler is an, uh, another great one. Uh, I think they came out with another one recently for uh, beyond Polaris. Polar yeah, that's it. Beyond Polaris for uh, people who are just starting off. So yeah, lots of different, uh, programs out there, varying skill levels that are required. You know, you could start off as, as a really novice amateur 
And as Will said, you know, somebody who's a master observer like him, there are lots of programs out there that are really tough. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to your credit, it, it took you, you said nine years, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a long time and you're doing the it more nights than, than often, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was mostly at star parties like TSP, Oki Tex, yeah. El Dorado. I mean, the Herschel 400 took me four years. Yeah. That's 400 objects. Uh, and I could have did it, did it faster, but I was doing it in dark skies like what Steven right. has, you know. And so it definitely uh, took me longer than it could have. But sure. I, I enjoyed that for sure. I enjoyed sure. how long yeah. it, it was. Yeah. So I mean, think about it. For Herschel 400, you said four years. So 100 objects a year. That's, you mm -hmm. know, one every three and a half days, give or take. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, some people will knock multiple out at a star party. Uh, others will take years just because you know life gets in the way. It's hard to 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 you know spend a lot of time out there observing these things. But uh, that's a, like I said, that's what I love about it. It gives you purpose. You can really uh, focus on what it is that you're you're observing and and learn a lot about it as opposed to just jump, jumping around at different objects. Absolutely. What's up, Hector from Mexico? Good to see you, Hector. Yeah, Marcos from Brazil too. Hello, Marcos. Yeah. Yeah, we've had Brazil, Mexico, Australia, Canada, Texas, like mostly, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there like a place that tells you how many people are watching? Uh, yeah, there's 40 right now. And we've, right. we've, we've had some pretty good, uh, we've got 22 on Facebook and 17 on YouTube. So thank you guys for joining us and hanging out with us for sure. We're just messing around, having a good time doing what we love to do. And normally we'd all be doing this together somewhere, right? Uh, usually out in Steven's neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, but uh, due to the whole nonsense going on here, we are at home, but Hey, we're making the, we're making the best out of this situation. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, what else are we going to be doing? You know, right. watching, watching the news or impractical West jokers, <laughs> Westworld. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind the of Mandalorian a virtual TSP. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and <laughs> Carol Baskins, no, uh, <laughs> that bitch, <meant> Carol Baskins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Real quick, guys, dance that was created for that, right? Have you seen that? The what is it? Carol Baskin TikTok dance. Yes, yeah, I saw oh, that. Absolutely awesome. hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what I want to do, guys, is I want to. Um, during the week of TSP, which is coming up, it's in it's like a month from now, but it would be the dark uh, the 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 new moon of of May, uh, where we would normally all be at TSP. What I want to do is do a, a a few live streams like this, where um, maybe we get Joe on, we get Mark on, we definitely got to get Steven on, and anybody that's either been to a TSP or has you know has gone with us in the past, and I want to run my videos with the audio off in the background and we just kind of mystery science 3000 ah. the video and you know we just oh, yeah. yeah we'll talk and we'll be at jimmy's house in one segment and then we'll be back at the prude ranch for another oh, funny <laughs> and uh yeah so i think if i because i have like uh four maybe four or five tsp specific videos now right and uh so we could load them into a playlist and just kind of let them go and 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 have fun with that i think that'd be pretty fun yeah uh, have people blast yeah have people come in and leave as they can and and right. you know come and go and uh i think that would be pretty fun and it, it would give us a chance to kind of feel like we were maybe maybe out there in yeah the, in, the, in the dark yeah so that's the cocoon oh cool that's a good galaxy it's one of my favorites too. Oh yeah. I can see its little partner there above it. Right. I'm gonna go to the sunflower now. Cool. Raphael I just started from a uh, ten minute integration on Hogs object. Oh. Hey, this might you know this might be the first time Hogs object was ever live streamed, Stephen. This might yeah, be I think you're right. I'll in ignore the that here. hideousness there. We've got uh we've got <laughs> yeah, I was calibrating the guider. Uh yeah, almost, almost still ten minutes. So, so come back to me in ten minutes, and I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, and grab a cup of coffee, guys. You know, hang out, wash your hands. You know, whatever you're doing out there. Good Sounds to have you, it. Terry. Uh, Kelsa, or is it Chelsea or Kelsa? I guess it's Kelsa. 
which, by the way, she's from Houston, I believe. Uh, yep. And I'm not sure if she is a member of the Houston Astronomical Society. Of HAS, yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, so working from home has given me the opportunity to spend more nights observing amazing. Uh, I don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. and no more driving into Houston highways. Uh, so I can spend all night observing or hanging out. Thanks for sharing the scopes. Thank you, Absolutely. Kelsa, for joining us. And again, yeah, thank you, Stephen, for all that you're doing, man. I mean, this is um, pretty incredible stuff that you're able to do for us. So it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a pleasure, man. Oh, you're, you're welcome. It's a lot of fun. And thank you all for, for being here and just tuning in. It's just hanging out. Um, and, and, and well, uh, uh, that's great, uh, uh, Kelsa. I, I hope I'm saying your name, uh, oh, name yeah. right. Uh, She'll correct us in a few minutes. <laughs> <if she is. laughs> I'm your soft C, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Salsa. I don't know. Uh, yes. Anyway, I, <laughs> um, this is this is uh, some luminance data I got on this the other night, and so now I'm starting a blue frame. Um, it's going to take me several uh, days probably most of this next week well, well the moon isn't up to really finish the color version of this uh it takes a long time to do a faint object like this even with dark skies and the big scope but sure. I'm, I'm excited right. for it um and you said 680 million light years 590 around 600 oh. million yes okay and 600 you can see that there's this little this is the center of the galaxy it's a Saturn ring and then there's this little speck and that's the other galaxy behind it if you're familiar with the Hoag's object, there is a there's a second ring galaxy inside or on the background. It's like a billion light years away, and it's just that tiny little speck there. Uh, I mean, I'm never going to resolve that. You know, I don't have Hubble, but uh, yeah. you know, it's a speck, and I'm proud of that speck. <laughs> that's a very that's a beautiful speck because you said it's like over a billion light years away. That's a quarter of the age of the entire solar system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, like. Uh, yeah, it's hard to make sense of big numbers like that. Yeah, again, the, the Hoag's object here, I mean, almost 600 million light years away, you know, uh, it, <laughs> the dinosaurs died 66 million years ago. It's it's just unbelievable to even kind of try to conceive of that. Absolutely. The cool thing about astronomy, as you start to grow more and more in the hobby, that you can look at a speck, and when you see that speck, say, wow, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, you yeah. know, a, a tiny collection of photons on, on the... On the uh, plate there or plate right the uh the chip and that's enough to make you say wow yeah 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 absolutely it's yeah. just mind-blowing yeah and, yeah and, and it's correct us it's a, it's a soft c i'm sorry it's, it's a, a soft, soft c? c oh yeah okay. salsa yeah salsa yeah. salsa okay. so there we go yeah. yeah, our apologies. We will butcher your name, especially me. I say that on all of my live streams, yeah. on all the moon stuff. You know, I get I get viewers from all over the world, uh, and I will butcher your name. I promise you. So uh, it's nothing personal. It's just I'm I'm very dumb. So. <laughs> Heba says hearts. Thank you, Heba. Hiba. See, I probably butchered that one. Who knows? I mess up Zia's name because my daughter is also named Zia. So you know, if I mess that ah. up, you know, then I'm up for the running for uh, worst dad of the year. Yeah, yeah. Especially since you were instrumental in naming that human being what they're exactly. called. So exactly. If you can't, if you can't do that, Joe, we've got to we got to amend your presidential status. I think. Right. So. <laughs> she says, "No problem. I'm used to it." Uh, and uh, Terry, you're very welcome. I'm ha I'm happy to share this, especially in these times when people can't, you know, exactly travel out to their favorite observing location or anything like that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's basically. Uh, so I was in Vegas when this whole breakout happened, and oh, this, you see the galaxy, guys. Yeah, definitely. I can see. I got you up right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's that's through a cloud. Oh, oh wow! Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. That's the, that's the, the, I'm completely clouded over with low, fast-moving clouds now. Oh wow! So that is actually now I cleared up. Yeah, I cleared up a bit. The cloud. See it come in pretty well, and then other times fade out. What yeah, galaxy okay, so, is that? Oh, uh, that's the sunflower. Oh, okay, cool. So, so what I'll do is I'm gonna actually uh, let me uh, let me do this real quick. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. He's gonna wiggle the scope. I'm gonna change it to just like night mode. Let's see. Uh, I can show you guys what the scope. There's the scope. Okay. Oh, cool. There's the house, right? And there's the sky. 
know if you can see that or not. Oh, I can definitely see the clouds there. Yeah. Clouds there. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, they're fast too. Uh, they're moving pretty quick, huh? Hauling yeah. some butt. Okay, now I'll put it back on the on the thing here. That's a cloud nebular. <laughs> There's the galaxy again. So I don't even really know how it does that. That's really crazy. You know, he's got the cloud filter in there, right? Yeah. The Vader cloud filter. Well, I mean, you can definitely see that it's washed out because of the cloud moving around it. But I mean, it's you can so still see the target. Incredible. I mean, I can still see the target. That's and I mean, it's almost like liquid air here. It's ninety-eight percent humidity. Ooh, I like wow. liquid air. Mike That's Hendrick, cool. Mike Hendrick is running. I gotta name it. I gotta name a song "Liquid Air." That's pretty. That's a cool. That's a cool name. Yeah, yeah that's a cool, cool t uh, phrase. Yeah. <laughs> Liquid air. So for anybody who's interested on the stream, that's what the night vision looks like. Oh, there you go. Same kind of stuff they put on their helmet when they run around and kill people. Wow. <laughs> and actually, you know, when I when I bought it, I had to sign an ITAR waiver, which basically just says like, oh, I promise wow. I won't export this. Um, this to anybody overseas or sell it to a non-American citizen. So, you know. And you won't kill anybody with it, right? <laughs> You're allowed to kill people without it, just not with it. <laughs> yeah, we're killing photons here. And Jane <laughs> brought that up earlier because she lives in Canada and she was like, oh, I can't have one. <laughs> Actually, uh, you, you probably could, but you, you could, you could, but you need to buy it. You need to buy it in Canada. Um, or or here, come to the states and then you can buy it here legally. No, you can't, back, buy, it right? you can't no? buy it here. No, you have to be. You must be a U.S. citizen. Really? Wow. But okay. Canada is an ally, so we share all of our technology, defense technology with Canada, and they let us put nuclear missiles up there along the dew line back in the day. Nuclear. So we control. I think we defend the whole, the whole, the whole continent of North America is basically a joint defense operation between U.S. and Canada. Mm. But um, so I'm sure they have the same tech. And they fight alongside us all the time, pretty much. So absolutely, yeah. Still waiting a couple of minutes. My guiding is uh, not so great right now, so I'm not sure how well it's going to turn out. But uh, yeah, You're it was doing PhD. really well. Yeah, it was doing really great a minute ago, and then all of a sudden it kind of went a little wonky. So it may have now, to how are you? It. How are you guiding, Stephen? Are you picking? Uh, I think we went over this before, but I forget. Is it a pickoff prism or is it a? It was an actual dedicated guide camera that was through a prism, right? Well, it's it's a funky thing called an onag, uh, and uh, basically, um, geez, how do I explain it? Uh, so the mirror, um, here, just use my hands to explain it. Uh, so there's a there's a mirror, okay, uh, and like a diagonal. The, the visible light comes in, hits the mirror. The visible light is reflected up to the imaging camera, and the infrared light passes through the mirror. It's invisible to it, basically, as uh, so it's a dichroic mirror. So the infrared passes through, and then the infrared goes to a uh, dedicated guide camera that's sensitive to infrared, sort of. And um, and that's actually what it's guiding on. That way, um, it, it's actually it's on axis with the telescope, the guider. And you don't get, uh, you're not just looking at one tiny portion like a pickoff. You're usually looking at a little small slice. Uh, and if, you're, if you don't get a guide star in there, uh, by chance, if there's just not one in there, you're kind of out of luck. But uh, uh, with this, you can get a wider part of the sky. And it, it works a lot better. So you get more points to guide off of? or Yeah, I've never had any issues finding a guide star. Well, okay, maybe once somewhere in, off the plane to the Milky Way, I had a hard time. But, but you can also move the chip around. If the chip isn't very big, you can actually move it. And uh, yeah, it's made by uh, Innovation Foresight. That's right, Onag. On ag, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's definitely off axis guiding too, which is reverse of what he said. The camera's in axis, and your guide camera is using a pickoff prism as sort of like right. uh, 45 at uh, 45 to your to your imaging camera. So you've got your guider camera, and like Stephen was saying in a previous cast, and like the of the, the 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 bane of many astro amateur astronomers is to find a star in that pickoff prism. It's actually a lot a lot harder than like what he's explaining here where it's just right there you're getting the light but that's interesting because would infrared would that infrared light be affected like more down here at sea level than it is for you up at seven thousand or six thousand feet uh technically it's not super far into infrared uh it's it's only out to about a thousand nanometers or micron or so um but uh it, it does is less affected by seeing because the the 
the longer the wavelength, usually the less affected it is by seeing effects. So that does that definitely helps a lot. That way your guide star isn't jiggling around as much, and the uh, exposure is is complete. So like, and it actually turned out turned out okay. So uh, yeah, there's there it is. There's a picture of Hoag's object, that faint little ring, uh, sixteen and a half magnitude, and uh, almost six hundred million light years away. So uh, there you go. That's pretty pretty deep. Uh, so single 10 minute exposure to just to get that so i'll have to get a lot more of those <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, get a final image it's gonna take a while <laughs> but that, for a 10 minute exposure everything looks like it's pretty well where it was during that 10 minutes so you're the stars are staying consistent you can see yeah. uh stars mm -hmm. are pinpoint they're not blobs uh you're picking up a lot of faint uh, nearby stuff too there it looks like which is pretty cool man you got lots of other little like it looks like a couple little galaxies there yeah and, uh, yeah that's some uh amp amp well but that'll calibrate mm -hmm. out um yeah yeah there this is this is a blue filter um but uh yeah there you can definitely see a few other little faint fuzzies off in the background too yeah especially this guy right there i don't know anything about that guy i don't know if he's further or closer or anything else because um, Hoag's is actually pretty big as a galaxy. It's over a hundred thousand light years across, which is which is pretty big for um, and uh, so it shows up well. But just because those are smaller doesn't mean they're further away. So yeah, yeah. Because in space, sometimes perspective is hard to get. You know, the stars over there to the right, they could they're obviously foreground stars. They're they're in our Milky Way versus Hoag's object is way out there, but. Those stars could be at any particular distance from us, and just because they're on the the line of sight, they appear like they're right next to each other. But if you were able to change your perspective, you would see that they're actually very far apart. And sometimes that's really interesting. I, uh, recently, with the uh, Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, and the Moon conjunction right. that we had, I was I stood there at dawn, like literally it was like seven a.m. I'd been up all night. It was a perfect night out here in Texas, though. So it was it was beautiful. But I stood out there and just for at least five minutes while I was uh, getting video of them, I was trying to just picture how far, you know, like Saturn is twice the distance as Jupiter. And then Mars is like only, you know, is, is even closer than Jupiter. And then the moon is even closer than that. So there was this triangular effect of like really far away and then kind of close and then really close, you know. And it was just cool to be able to put my brain into that mindset and imagine because it's hard to imagine it because it's, you know, it's it's on the the, the, the the blanket of the sky, right? But if you just allow yourself to, your mind to bend a little bit, you can get that perspective. And then it's like the, you just kind of like, oh, wow, I, I, I get it. You know, you kind of understand it, I guess, in that way. Well, you can start yeah. positioning some of those objects in kind of a 3D way. You know, again, you know, there are limits to what we can do as humans <laughs> putting those things uh, through our minds. But, you know, like you said, Putting kind of Mars, the Moon, Jupiter, Saturn into you know their their proper positions and from a 3D perspective is really mind blowing, right? And it makes a lot of sense when uh, you know you see certain objects that uh, can be seen as crescents, like the Moon or as Venus and whatnot, and you think about where they are relative to like the Sun and what's illuminating them. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty impressive, right? But you take that outside of the solar system and it's a completely different ball game, right? When you're talking about uh, light years or several light years between objects yeah yeah six trillion miles is hard to fathom i it mean is, i had trouble with two hundred and forty thousand miles right. that's a long way to the moon but six trillion miles good right. grief well i always say two hundred forty thousand miles is a lot but i've flown that much in a year before so it can't be wow that yeah <laughs> uh yeah if you were to put an ir pass filter on your guide scope well, would i get better guiding uh maybe yeah, yeah it's possible if you are um uh, it depends on your camera and how sensitive it is to IR. Mo most of them are, um, unless they already have a built-in cut filter. You may want to check for that. Um, but yeah, it, it can work. You get you get a little bit of an improvement. Uh, the differences are most notable at really high magnifications, though. Uh, it's when you're going to know the, uh, the you're going to notice the biggest difference. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, stars are the ones that are kind of aligned in a curve to the center right of the image. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, oh, one of the main that's benefits that's of the unag is, yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, there is a little bit of astigmatism 
uh, from from passing through that mirror I described earlier, uh, and that actually can be an advantage. Or they make a little corrector to take it out if you don't yeah. want to. I, I haven't bothered to do that, uh, but yeah, it can be useful. I don't have that software. I haven't bothered with it, but uh, it works for some people. Yeah, um, absolutely. There's so many ways to. I don't even want to use that old euphemism to uh, to, to skin cat. certain cat, things, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can do this stuff, you know. And it, it seems like uh, everybody kind of has their own method and like what works best for them and stuff. Right. And that's that's the cool thing is like you get to especially going to star parties, man. You get to see all the different imaging setups. Uh, you get to see all the different ways of guiding or you know polar alignment and all this stuff. Yeah. And so it really does kind of give you a a better perspective on what you're doing. I think the appropriate term for these times would be uh, that's one of the nice different I ways to skin the bat. Skin the bat. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Too soon. Too soon. Sorry. <laughs> Too soon. Um, is so that where Hoax is? Yeah, Hoax is in the center, and I clicked on one of the stars there. I was wondering if it had magnitude. Uh, built in. Oh, magnitude 11.8 are visible about 11. Yeah, so those little stars are 11th magnitude, which means they're really, really, really dim. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, for I mean, not super crazy dim. You can see them in your telescope, but you're never going to see them with the naked eye. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, yeah, they're they're uh, they only look super bright because it's such a long exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'm done, guys, because there's this, it looks like clouds the rest of the night, so I'm going to put the cover over it. Oh, that's a shame. And the yeah. way is about 10 degrees up right now, so I don't know if in the dome you can see it. Omega? Oh, yeah, I can't uh, I can't go He's quite definitely right got though. a better chance than I do. Yeah, you're, you're clouded out almost from Horizon. Oh, yeah, completely now, yeah. That was good seeing know. you guys hanging, hanging out. It was fun. Yeah, yeah Mark. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us, Mark. And um, you know, I'm sure we'll see we'll see Mark again. I mean, Mark's oh, yeah. always around, so I'll we'll see around. him again for sure. Please. Thanks for the views, Mark. <laughs> yeah, Good stuff. yeah. Unfortunately, Omega, um, even if it does get above the uh, dome limit, actually, Mount Mount Lock itself blocks it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I get, I get actually from where I'm sitting. Uh, sometimes you can watch Omega pass. Uh, like if you got the two domes of the observatory kind of right. kind of here, you can trace it, and then it kind of pops behind a dome, comes back, and pops behind the other. Yeah, it kind of traces yeah. a nice arc over the mountain. Nice. Okay. Um, but too low for the telescope. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Jane says thank you, Mark. Of course, good stuff. Very awesome, man. Well, what do you yeah. think? Uh, Y'all want to do one more object or something, or uh, oh, okay. maybe? Well, it's easy sure. for me. To say, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I'll do one. I know. I'll, let, I'll let this uh, frame finish here in ninety seconds because this yeah, will definitely. end up with a full picture eventually once I calibrated everything and stuff. So yeah, and I know. I, I know you want to get to to getting that data on a, such a clear night. We'll let you. Yeah. We'll we'll do one more. We'll let you get to that, man. And because I can't wait to see what you get, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Let me know what what other target you want to do. Uh, well, Joe, do you have anything offhand that you? Uh, that you I really fancy? want to see Omega, but uh, <laughs> 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 we'll have but, to use the Earth Nebula for, or the Earth. Say, filter uh, Virgo should be pretty high in the sky right now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we already saw the sombrero. Mm -hmm. What else? There a whole are, bunch of galaxies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are a, a plethora of uh, galaxies. That's for sure. Uh, let's. Uh, I don't know. Somebody on the on the live stream right now want to type in something they want to see. If we can get some, of course. There's a there's a delay there, so they'll probably be gotcha. a little bit delayed. But we'll we'll let them get a chance to uh, to get in there. Got time for this exposure to finish. Right. Yeah, there you go. We got time. Yeah, nineteen more seconds. So I, I didn't get a chance to take a look at M fifty one through your setup there. I don't know if you guys did that earlier. Uh, actually, we didn't. Um, you did. I can. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Yeah. yeah let's see what that looks like there. Sure, we could do it. There we go. So, how many more of those ten minute subs are you aiming for, uh, Stephen? Uh, at least, at least twenty two more. Whoo! Yeah, so that's gonna so be some, 
Oh, yeah, I'm not going to finish this project tonight. Yeah, luckily I've got uh, a clear forecast ahead of me. Yeah, um, and that's that's what I love about astro imaging is he's got this project that on every clear night when this object is up, he's taking data on, and it could happen. It could take years, but then right. he takes all that data from all those years because it's a galaxy so far away, nothing's moving, nothing's changing. And you can stack all that stuff even from multiple years apart, and then you still get that same image. It's incredible. Yeah, that's right. It makes it convenient. I can uh, pick it up later on. All right. Uh, Chris says uh, he sees some amp glow in the 1600 Pro. You have problems processing that out? Uh, nah, it comes right out with a dark frame. Yeah, it, it, it looks bad on there because, you know, it was a really high stretch and it was a really long exposure, but... Uh, it just it just calibrates right out, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And we do have some get uh, some requests for next time, which we'll probably do this again maybe next week if uh, or maybe in a th three or four days if Stephen has time and clear skies. Yeah. So we might be able to do the Siamese twins for you, Brad. Oh for yeah, sure. that's a good one too. But uh, let's do fifty one here. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's still good way I to. Thought I stopped the integration. Oh well, this will be an interesting um, uh, frame here. Oh, because it's because it's still taken. Yeah, yeah, I love it when it does this. You get overlaid things uh, if it if it downloads. No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't actually download it. Oh well. All right, let's see where we are. A quick little twenty second. I've been. I, I like that effect too. Like kind of like what we were seeing with Mark's scope when he slews to an object, you see the stars kind of going by. Right. And I, f I figured this thing out with my Sony A7S Mark II. It's such a sensitive sensor that uh, at TSP, what I was doing, I was starting a uh, an exposure, like a thirty second exposure with my camera, and I'd zoom in or out with the lens, and you get this sort of like hyperspace kind of <laughs> like the stars are coming at you. And that's actually the yeah. the cover to my second album. Oh, oh got, cool. Yeah, no, Deep Sky Tunes Volume 2. Uh, yeah, and you can see that Jupiter is the big bright streak to the right of the album cover, and uh, then the rest of the stars are just kind of coming out at you. It's pretty cool. Nice. There it is. Very nice. So yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, interacting galaxies tonight, at least since I've been on, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You really start to realize how common they are. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. there's lots of interacting ones. All galaxies do is cannibalize each other, basically. That's so it. it's that's it. Mm -hmm. That or create stars and spin quietly in the night. <laughs> Bubble their way up to being uh, giant elliptical galaxies, right? Yep. Uh, basically, yeah. That's and then goal, you just get right? this blob of nothing or a blob of everything. I don't know. Sal uh, still wants yeah. to know if your pictures are going to be on the Instagrams. Yeah, when think... they're when they're done, I'll definitely post them there. there yeah. You Absolutely. And you can, you can follow me at um, Hummel underscore Steven on Instagram. Yeah, I should have made you a little one, ticker three, here. Three great, you know, somewhat nearby galaxies that uh, we get this perspective from them on, right? It's a uh, nice uh, kind of a top-down view or bottom-up view, depending on, on the way it's spinning. But uh, you really get a chance to see kind of the uh, the spiral arms, the structure in there, any of the, the gas knots and uh, uh, those dust lanes. To me, uh, it's funny because we're always chasing photons, but the absence of photons there in those dust lanes is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the absence of light is just as meaningful. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it uh, never gets old looking at it in 51. It's just a magnificent galaxy. Right. Yeah. And we say we say galaxy, right? But you can see there two uh, two galaxies, yeah, two, two <laughs> galaxies, right? <laughs> yeah, and there's some and there's some IC galaxies that he's picking up right there. Uh, the yeah, in the, okay. the four thousand range, yeah, those little yeah. ICs. Actually, those were in uh, Jimmy Lowry's talk, I believe, from TSP last year, which is on mm -hmm. my YouTube channel. The full talk, you can go see it. I, I encourage y'all if y'all are into deep sky galaxies and all this stuff, you got to go hear Jimmy's talk on that because he talks about those very galaxies next to M51 and they're monsters. They are gargantuan yeah. galaxies. Yeah. Uh, mm. And there's definitely a lot of good info in that talk. Jimmy Lowry uh, on my Deep Sky Dude YouTube channel. Uh, go check it out. It's a great talk. I have a, also a, a talk from Larry Mitchell on there that you don't want to miss. It's a great, great talk. A lot of deep sky stuff. So yeah. it's, it's good to say. Jane, have a great night. Thank you for joining us. We Love appreciate you. Come back and join us next time. Yeah.
Yeah, Larry's talks are fantastic. You always want to catch those whenever you can. And then the, the cool thing about Larry's talks are uh, you can listen to them once and then go back in a year or two, listen to it again. You'll pick up on a lot that you didn't catch the first time, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's, you know, there's so much you miss because Larry, Larry could speak for two hours straight. Right. Right. And I would be just like transfixed, like what? Oh, cool. You know, yeah. his 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 presentations are so, so deep. You spend um, a lot of time researching his subjects. Absolutely. And dude, his lists every year at TSP, yeah. literally, if you get the printed list from him, right. it's a book. It's it, yeah. he literally went through half a ream of paper just for your copy. Yeah. And it's every page you turn. It's got the object that he wants you to see. And then like a paragraph and a half or two right up on the object you know people right. like larry mitchell and jimmy lowry are the 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 heavy hitters the the yeah. epitome of amateur astronomy and visual astronomy yeah um so those guys are definitely two you should check out and again both of those talks are on my channel and i encourage y'all to go see them because they're they're for one they're underviewed um right. they both have less than a thousand views and they should have ten thousand views yeah they're videos. great stuff absolutely yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy and, and Larry did an amazing job. And what was funny that year, I think it was, was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. Um, they, the, the, the talk people, the people that like uh, organized the talks, right. they sandwiched me between Jimmy Lowry <laughs> and Larry Mitchell. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was like on a Wednesday and I'm yeah. like, oh my God, like. Like trying you're to gonna put me, needles, right? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna put me after Jimmy Lowry and Larry Mitchell. But what was cool, or after Jimmy and before Larry, but what was cool is Jimmy and Larry were there for my talk, which wow. normally they had no reason to go in here about a telescope on a plane, but they were there for that, and it right. was incredible to have them there uh, because me just talking about going to a NASA thing, and uh, but that was a lot of fun, and uh, so. But, you know, maybe in 2021, we'll have uh, talks again at TSP. We'll, well see. I, uh, not to name drop, right? But, uh, you know, Stephen Amelia Goldberg had invited me over to their house. Uh, they were hosting David Levy uh, about a month ago, a little over a month wow. ago. But uh, so David Levy's there. You've got, uh, you know, the Goldberg there. You've got Larry Mitchell. You have all these people that just have all of these great stories. And here I am, I'm just thinking, you know what? I'm just going to shut up and listen to these people. I'm not going to say a word. And it was just absolutely fascinating. I mean, listening to, to David's stories, listening to, to Larry, and just the amount, like you said, the, the research that he goes through and anytime he's putting these lists together. And, um, you know, one of the things I didn't realize is you know, Larry's got the, the luxury of having a 36 inch telescope that he uses for putting these lists together. But He's got to go to people that have, say, an eight-inch telescope and say, hey, tell me what you see and if this is something right. that's really achievable. But uh, there's a lot of work, uh, not just by Larry, but by other people to help validate all the things that go into that list. So it's really a treat to get a chance to, to, to observe those objects uh, at every TSP. Absolutely. Yeah, the Goldbergs are a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, they set up near us. I mean, because yeah. we're all from the Houston group, right? And Absolutely. so we set up near them and we'll wander over to their scopes at night. We're like, what are y'all looking at? Oh, some super obscure, faint thing <laughs> that nobody's ever viewed through a telescope before. Right. Oh, cool. I definitely yeah. want to see that, you know? So, uh, yeah, Steve, Steve is really cool. Steve uh, did a, a video session with me one time on uh sky tools and he ran oh. me through the program and kind of gave me a crash course on it which was really cool for him to take the time out of his yeah. day to do that he really and, knows that platform very well yeah absolutely yeah really cool people uh steven and amelia, amelia both. Actually, yeah i mean i sorry to interrupt you but celsa no. earlier was talking about the universe sampler um amelia goldberg that's the program that she actually put together for for the astronomical league so that's exactly right and if you turn your work in at the end of that award, you turn it into Amelia, and she yeah. she's the one who signs off on your stuff and gives you your uh, certificate and pin. So Absolutely. it's really cool. Yeah, yeah and they, they both do a lot of outreach with the Houston Astronomical Society. If you've ever come to one of our outreach events, um, Amelia's the one with the pink telescope. Uh, yeah, Astra, old, right? Astra, yeah. She took an old eight-inch dog, completely rebuilt it from the ground up, and uh, painted it pink, and it's. But I, I could bring, you know, Mark's 25-inch knob there. It's going to be overshadowed by that 8-inch telescope right? every time. No, absolutely. You can see the dome moving there in Stephen's yeah. view. That's awesome. Yeah, the Goldbergs are really cool. I've actually been emailing Steve uh, back and forth. Uh, he just, I guess, recently found out that I'm a musician and that I have albums out. 
Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, and so he uh, he was like, hey, where can I get your music? And I'm like, well, here's some sources. And if you can't get it through there, I'll just send you the files. You know, right. he's like, no, I want to buy it. And I'm like, you're awesome. And good people, uh, good, good people. Yeah. And so they bought both my albums and stuff like that. And so it's just really cool. So Steve and Amelia, if you're out there, thank you all so yeah. much for buying that. I appreciate y'all. One other Steve and Amelia story before you know <laughs> we drop off here. But uh, when I was in seventh grade, this is a long time ago. Uh, Clyde Tombaugh was in Houston doing a, you know, kind of a book tour and, and signing and things like that. People who brought Clyde to Houston and Clyde at the time was raising money uh, for, I think, some, some additional schooling he wanted to do. Uh, and Clyde was an older gentleman at the time, right? This was in the, the 80s and, and whatnot. But um, it was one of those events that really just set me on the path to following amateur astronomy and having the opportunity to meet the man who discovered Pluto was just yeah. a treat. And it was Steve and Amelia who really, you know, kind of went out of their way to arrange for Clyde to come to Houston. And so we talked about that event and we didn't realize that, you know, this this one event kind of connected us, you know, me as a, as a younger kid and them putting it together. And so uh, just a real treat to see all the things that they've done for amateur astronomy in the Houston area and even beyond, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah. And they, they were the ones that brought David in uh, yeah. for that lecture at, uh, at was at it Rice, Rice University? University? Yeah. Yep. I was there and it, I, I bought his book. I got him to sign it. Uh, wow. And in fact, I have it somewhere. Oh, I have it right here, actually. It's hilarious. Yep. Uh, hey. And uh, he signed it for me, which is pretty cool because, you know, David yeah. Levy is definitely one of my all time astronomical heroes, oh, artists, yes. whatever you want to call it. Yes. But, uh, when I was a kid, that was my goal, right? I wanted to discover a comet and, you know, he could say, yeah, I've done that. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> discovered more than a few, but the coolest thing he discovered was a comet that rammed itself into Jupiter's atmosphere. Yeah. Shoemaker Levy 9. Yeah, right. I mean, what a find. Right. Like, yeah, it makes me just want to quit because I'll never find anything <laughs> that cool. Right. But, you know, it's still pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, Kelsey uh, – I'm sorry – Celsa okay. says, I'm blown away by all the things I've learned and cannot believe I'm not even a quarter of completion through the award, the, the sa universal sampler. And now I'm learning about Julian days. Ooh, that's a, that's a complicated uh, subject right there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, um, you know, when I had the chance to meet him, I, I got one that was personally signed like yours. Oh, wow. Brother, and David did sign these. So, uh, you know, they're not personalized, but they are signed by David. And uh, if you ever want to do something where you do a giveaway or anything else like that, let me know. We'd be glad to give these to people who'd love to you know, take the time to read, you know, a bit about David's life. So uh, that's you know, awesome, man. Giveaway with some of these books here. That would be great, man. Or you could. Uh, I was wondering if you had them on eBay. Uh, I almost had David sign it to eBay. <laughs> <laughs> to you know, to eBay. Here, just a lot. He's like great. <laughs> Who is this for? It's like uh, eBay. eBay. <laughs> May raise an uh, eyebrow. I was going to give these away at ASP this year, and if we're not doing that, uh, we find another home for them. That's awesome, man. I, that's a, that's a great thing, and let's talk about that. That'd be fun to do uh, yeah. if we could maybe get on one of these live streams and uh, maybe do it for everyone who's participating. Yeah. You know, in yeah. the moment. Yep. That would be very generous of you and Certainly. extremely awesome. Uh, I mean, that's beautiful. Okay. It's a great book. I, I'm a couple of chapters in already, and it's his really it's his life story from life going story. way back. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And uh, you know, you don't realize. I mean, we've followed his discoveries for a long time and, and all the things that he's done. But uh, you know, to know David the person, you know, and all the things that he's experienced and gone through and whatnot, it really just kind of it, it adds several dimensions to everything that he's done and everything he's discovered. Right. So, yeah. And he's very open with like his past relationships yeah. and some of the, the trials and tribulations he went to with a, a previous wife. And I was kind of shocked by that. And I was like, wow, you know, he's really kind of putting it out there, but maybe some people need to hear that kind of stuff, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. Um, so, but it, it was really just, he, he, he sings like a song at the end of his presentation. Yeah. The, the one that he did in Houston, right. it's online somewhere uh, recorded and he he started it with a poem and it's like who wrote that and you know you'd right. be like you know who is it this and this and this and then he reveals it to you. I don't want to ruin it but it's in the book and it's in yeah. the it's in the talk but uh, incredible stuff man if you ever I, this is the second or third no it's the third time I've been able to see David speak it oh, really? two were at yeah two were at uh, 
uh, Oki Techs and I guess TSP or maybe it was both Oki Techs. I can't remember. And okay. then uh, in Houston. So yeah. fantastic speaker. If you ever get a chance to see him do it while we, while we still have him with us for sure. Absolutely. Cause all of us are getting older, you know, yeah. all of us are. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Father time is undefeated. Yeah. And entropy doesn't uh, play favorites. Does it? Yeah. No, yeah. It definitely doesn't, but. Well, cool. Let's uh, let's call it an evening right there. I mean, it's been a, an awesome night. It's already almost midnight here. Oh, it's almost Monday morning here in Texas, uh, yeah. and uh, so that's pretty cool. But you know, hopefully uh, everybody's doing okay out there with all this mess. You know, hopefully everybody's staying home if you can. Uh, if you're if you're an essential worker, we thank you for working and doing what you got to do. If you're a healthcare worker, we really appreciate you here. Um, Absolutely, Stephen. Thank you, man. Um, Awesome. Um, you mean you showed us stuff that you just can't reach yeah. with anything else. Uh, I mean, Hoag's object. That's we should win a Pulitzer just for uh, <laughs> doing right. this. Uh, so, so thank you, Stephen. We, we much appreciate you, man. Thank Give you. Stephen a follow immediately on Instagram if you're on there. It's 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 scrolling down at the bottom right there. You got to give him a follow because he's that's posting true. stuff like Hoag's object. I mean, it looks like his pictures look like he's stolen them offline and like, oh, look at this. I here's a galaxy, but it's actually a picture that Steven took. So keep that, keep that in mind when you're looking at his stuff. It's not right. some NASA picture. This is his we'll personal see. work. Yeah. The stuff. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, you're, I'm flattered. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's yeah. That's awesome. And Joe, thanks for joining us, man. Thank I mean, my pleasure. Thanks for the invite. Uh, certainly enjoyed it. Sorry. I wasn't really set up with the proper lighting and everything else, but it's always a, Fun time chatting with you and Stephen. It was a pleasure meeting you. And hopefully oh, you're worried about proper lighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we said you're in the we are in the red light district over there. there we go. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, uh, it is what it is. You when we make it out to West Texas next time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I look forward to meeting you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Me and me and Steven, I think, actually met on Instagram. I'm like almost positive. Uh, yeah, or I met you at TSP. You like checked me in one day. Yeah, uh, I recognized well, I, you. That's right. That's right. I recognized you from Instagram, and you were like checking yeah. people in at TSP. I'm like, wait a minute, I know this guy. Yeah, and I was like, wait, you're Stephen. You're Stephen Hummel. Wait, I've followed yeah. you on Instagram. We were like, oh, cool. And he was just like, I just want to drive in and kind of look around. And so I was like, well, I didn't see you pull in, so just go in there. But no, but it's it's perfectly fine for McDonald employees to come in at TSP and go hang out and go around. Oh, yeah. But yeah. yeah, and it was cool because I was like, you know, uh, go have fun and whatever, and we'll we'll hang out and chat. And then you know, so we met person to person then, and uh, you know, we've been kind of hanging out online and in, you know in person ever since. I mean, I got to go on July fourth and view through the thirty six inch telescope thanks to Stephen. Uh, me and my friend Eddie Trevino went out there and did that. And that was absolutely incredible, y'all. Um, I've still got pictures and video from that. I haven't done anything with. I'm so far behind on some of that stuff, but you know how it is. But you get another uh, chance. Yeah, you can pile it all together. Yeah, yeah. yeah just like my my uh, my stuff at Mount Wilson. Or not Mount Wilson, uh, Mount Locke. I get all these mounts mixed together. <laughs> yeah, Sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, thank you, Sharon, for joining us. Uh, you're awesome. We appreciate you hanging out. Sharon runs our uh, planetarium down here in Beaumont, helps us do our astronomy meetings when COVID's not around. So yeah. And uh, Laura says, thanks, Stephen. Yes. Yes. That's probably how I should have said that. Uh, Ken, <laughs> Ken Churchill says, great show, Stephen. Thanks for uh, last night's show as well. It was great night all. Have a great night, Ken. Thank you, Ken, for connecting me with your friends. I'm actually going to be interviewed by some of his friends coming up which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, Joaquin said, Alo, uh, hola. Uh, hello, hola. Hello, hola. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. And uh, again, so if you want to find uh, more stuff on Stephen, follow him at the ticker below at Hummel at, or at Hummel dash or underscore Stephen. You see it there. Yeah, Copy if you that follow Stephen Hummel, I don't know who that is. So it ain't me. <laughs> yeah, I was already taken. Some, <laughs> some guy that shoots landscapes right. or some yeah, lame thing know, like that. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to find out more about Joe, uh, go to the Houston Astronomical yeah. Society and play around on their website. And there's really there's really no way you can miss him. Um, yeah, no, that, thanks, thanks for the plug, Will. And, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, we've got our uh, novice meeting that we're going to be uh, streaming via Zoom, as well as on the following night, our general meeting. Those are open to the public as well. So if you go to astronomyhouston.org, we don't have it up yet. But uh, sometime this week, we'll have details on how you can register for those talks. 
Uh, the novice meeting is really about astronomy travel, star parties and things like that. So if you want to uh, learn a bit more, Steve Goldberg, uh, Will, Bill Spaziri, I think you've met Bill, uh, Will, mm -hmm. and uh, Debbie Moran are going to be talking about their experiences traveling for uh, star parties, eclipse tours and things like that. So i uh, love to have everybody join if they can. Yeah, definitely. And Debbie Moran, we got to get her connected with Steven because she's a dark sky advocate too. So, oh, yes. yeah. so, so, you know, great segue there. Thank you. <laughs> it's almost like we practice this. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Uh, like on Friday, she's going to be talking about some of the things that she's done in the Houston area. So uh, we're right. seeing a lot of positive development in the work that she's done. She's been almost tireless and relentless in advocating for better lighting and, and darker skies here in Houston. As, as you know, we, we are uh, really behind the times when it comes to sensible lighting and, and, and that kind of strategy and approach. But uh, we finally have some advocates and, and she's been working with the IDA and others to really push the city council here and the mayor to adopt just better lighting strategies, right? Uh, so uh, the talk on that Friday is, is about lighting and all the work that she's done and an update based on some of the positive developments that we've seen there. So. Please that, join us there as well. I will. I will definitely join that. Uh, I'm all ears for that. Yeah, so. and uh, Joe, if you would, um, maybe I know it's the first Friday of the month. It's a, is it going to be at 7 p.m.? So it's going to be at 7 p.m. Uh, now, normally, without this whole coronavirus thing, we would do our novice meeting on the same night, just prior to the general. But gotcha. the novice meeting is going to be the Thursday, so our main meeting is actually in April, <laughs> April 30th. Uh, and then Friday will be the the general meeting. Friday, May first. Okay, cool. And, what, and maybe if you could keep me updated, I'll post on Deep Absolutely. Sky Dude, and uh, we can we can get a, a, a hopefully a, a wider audience to people not even from the Houston or even from Texas. Y'all right. can all come in and join, and and maybe you'll learn a tidbit or two. Absolutely. And that's that's what Joe's mission is. I know it is because I know his heart. I know what he is passionate about in astronomy and it's outreach. It I mean, that's, he came from an outreach chair to president of yeah. Houston Astronomical Society, which is, I think, the second or third largest uh, group, I think, in America. That's what we keep wow. hearing, you know, sometimes second, sometimes third, just depending on, you know, who, who you're talking to at what time. But yeah, we're a, we're a large group and uh, we want to really appeal to as many people as we can, even outside of the Houston area. Absolutely. And so we'll, I'll have posts about that coming up on Deep Sky Dude. So follow Certainly. the Facebook page, uh, yeah. which is where one of these streams, I'm going to YouTube and Facebook right now, uh, but follow the uh, Deep Sky Dude Facebook, follow the Houston Astronomical Society Facebook. They have one as well. Sure. Um, and follow Stephen Hummel and, and follow Ron Sparkman, a couple of our buddies that were here earlier. Ron runs at Stardom Space on all the platforms. Uh, you'll notice it with the the nebula with the big S in it. That's Ron's platform. He's a great guy, posting good content. So follow Ron's work as well. And my buddy Mark Farage, he doesn't have much social media, but you'll definitely be seeing more of Mark uh, if you're hanging out with me. I mean, go watch my go watch my TSP or Okie Text videos uh, on my Deep Sky Dude channel. You'll see Mark all over the place because he, yeah, he definitely hangs out near me. And uh, we've become really good friends. I met him in 2014, and I feel like I've known him my whole life. And same thing with Joe. I mean, I think I met Joe in 2015. I feel like I've known him my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and same with Steven. You know, everybody, It's we all share such a common passion, and we're all so on fire and enthusiastic right. about astronomy that we are kind of on that same level with yeah. each other. So we understand, you know, a lot of different things about each other. So that's, that's pretty cool. And so yeah. – and, and I, I guess the, the 30 people that are watching right now are as obsessed with astronomy as we are, or else there's no way there's no way they would have stayed and hung out with three random dudes, uh, two, two thirds of which have baseball caps on. You know? right. yeah, it's sure. hard to get a haircut these days, man. Yeah. But Joe has no problem with haircuts. I mean, it's just, right. I may join you, Joe. I mean, you know, this, this whole thing, I may not be able to get a haircut for another month. And hey. If I let this thing go any further, it's going to be bad for everybody around. Me. <laughs> uh, so with that, guys, uh, thank you all for hanging out with us. Uh, again, thank you to my panelists who have hung out with us for uh, the whole night. It's been an amazing thing. Have a thank, great week. Thank you, everybody. Will. Yeah, thank you for hosting. You're always such a great host. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That means a lot coming from somebody who has the best radio voice in astronomy. Uh, so <laughs> I think that's what we discovered through all this, by the way. But, uh, but, but thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And there's more of these live streams coming, guys. We're going to we're going to be doing this even after the COVID mess. 
Uh, we're going to be doing this. Uh, probably it's going to set a new standard in, in streaming and stuff like that with everybody doing streams. And so it'll be kind of a consistent thing, I bet you, through, through everybody who's doing these different live streams about astronomy or uh, pottery or whatever they're doing online these days. You know, I bet you there's going to be a lot of different live streams and concerts, too. But yeah, uh, yeah appreciate you guys watching and hanging out with us. We'll be back again. Uh, but until then, uh, clear skies, man. Hopefully the weather clears up for everybody and, uh, take care of yourselves, take care of someone else and wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see y'all on the next one, guys. Y'all have a great evening. Yeah, everyone. Good to see you.